TV9 network endeavors to talk about unsung heroes of the road transport logistics sector and bring together notable stakeholders to discuss the way forward. Now, as a follow-up to the successful first session, first season of the Leaders of Road Transport Awards, this is a conclave that kicks off in four cities. TV9 Network now brings to you the second season. We have gathered here today to discuss key pillars of road transport and logistics sector. Now, India's road transport network is the second largest in the world, just behind the US, and is rapidly expanding. It's imperative, therefore, to talk about the progress in the logistics sector and the challenges that we need to mitigate together. In the season two, we will recognize the success of transporters like you all for the achievements, for your achievements, for the businesses, for your stories, and understand better where we can do better. TV9 Network is happy to carry the legacy forward for this session. Now, the leaders of Road Transport Conclave began in Bengaluru, and we are here in Delhi today. This is designed as a platform to bring light to key pillars uh, to achieve smart mobility. You are the stakeholders from all quarters, transporters, logistics experts, and so there's no better way to understand here in the heart of the national capital what your issues are and how we can mitigate them together. The conclave, remember, as I said, set off in Bengaluru, and we are here in Delhi to discuss the roadmap ahead for a sustainable future together. Let's quickly listen into this video. Eyes on the screen before we kick off. Thank you. बदलावों को जो बेबाकी से स्वीकार करता है मिसाल कायम कर ही जाता है इसी जज्बे के साथ नए बदलावों को अपनाते हुए भारत की इकोनॉमी को एक नई रफ्तार दे रहा है देश का रोड एंड ट्रांसपोर्ट सेक्टर ट्रांसपोर्ट और लॉजिस्टिक सेक्टर के शाइनिंग स्टार्स के जुनून और हौसलों को नई उड़ान देने के लिए पिछले साल कॉन्टिनेंटल टायर्स के साथ मिलकर टीवी नाइन नेटवर्क ने लीडर्स ऑफ रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट के सीजन वन का सफल आयोजन किया और अब इसका सीजन टू लौट रहा है बिल्कुल नए अंदाज में इस साल अवार्ड से पहले ट्रांसपोर्ट सेक्टर से जुड़े कई बड़े स्टेक होल्डर्स के साथ हम ला रहे हैं थॉट लीडरशिप कॉन्क्लेव की एक सीरीज लीडर्स ऑफ रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट कॉन्क्लेव देश में बढ़ रहे एक्सप्रेस और हाईवेज का जाल क्या रख रहे हैं हम रोड सेफ्टी का ख्याल इनोवेशन के साथ फ्लीट को कैसे करें स्केल अप नई टेक्नोलॉजी के सहारे हमारा रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट नेटवर्क आज कैसे बन रहा है मिसाल और गो ग्रीन का लक्ष्य साधे ट्रांसपोर्ट सेक्टर में हम सस्टेनेबिलिटी कैसे रख सकते हैं बरकरार और भी ऐसे कई खास विषयों पर आपके जैसे देश के जाने माने फ्लीट ओनर्स और कॉन्टिनेंटल सीनियर लीडरशिप के साथ हम करेंगे आज चर्चा और साथ में जानेंगे कॉन्टिनेंटल के इनोवेटिव और टेक ड्रिवन कॉन्टी 360 डिग्री फ्लीट सर्विसेज के बारे में भी तो चलिए लीडर्स ऑफ रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट कॉन्क्लेव का करें आगाज और साथ मिलकर तैयार करें एक नया रोड मैप All right, let's put our hands together, please, for Continental Presents Leaders of Road Transport Conclave. We are here in Delhi. Lift our spirits before we kick off this session. Let me quickly begin by inviting on stage TV9 Digital Group editor, Mr. Panini Anand, and as well as Rajneesh Kochkave, Head Sales Marketing at Continental. Panini, I think we have a bouquet. We are hoping to get a bouquet. We don't have one, but may I first invite you, Panini, for your opening address. Thank you. Bahut shukriya. To ye ek sahaj swabhavik sawal ho sakta hai ki sahitya pe baat hoti hai, tamam seminars mein, videsh nitiyon pe baat hoti hai, vyapar pe baat hoti hai. बात होती है कि देश में कौन सी पार्टी क्या कर रही है कौन सी विचारधारा क्या कर रही है कहाँ पे मंदिर बनना चाहिए कहाँ पे मस्जिद बननी चाहिए तो फिर ये पहिए पे बात क्यों हो रही है ट्रांसपोर्ट पे बात क्यों हो रही है रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट की बात क्यों हो रही है ये बहुत सहज 
आने वाला सवाल है और ये बात इसलिए हो रही है इसका जवाब ये है कि दुनिया पैसे से नहीं चलती दुनिया संसाधनों से नहीं चलती है दुनिया पहिए से चलती है अगर आप ये समझने की कोशिश करें कि इंसान के वजूद में जो सबसे बड़ा इनोवेशन था जो सबसे बड़ी प्रगति थी जहाँ से इंसान की ज़िंदगी बदली सिविलाइजेशन की शुरुआत हुई सभ्यताओं की शुरुआत हुई तो वो पहला सोपान है पहिए का आविष्कार चीज़ों का मूव करना जब चीज़ें चलना शुरू हुई तो वहाँ से व्यापार शुरू हुआ वहाँ से आ, स्टेट और ट्रांसपोर्टेशन के माध्यम से संस्कृति नियम पदार्थ संसाधन ये सारी चीज़ें दुनिया भर में पहुँचना शुरू हुई इसलिए भी पहिया या ट्रांसपोर्ट आपकी ज़िंदगी की बुनियाद है आपका देश आपका समाज आपकी भाषा आपकी सभ्यता पहिए पे चलती है और जब हम बात करते हैं रोड ट्रांसपोर्टेशन की तो किसी भी अर्थव्यवस्था के लिए दुनिया की किसी भी अर्थव्यवस्था के लिए केवल भारत नहीं ये एक जो पूरा सेक्टर है ये बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है और भारत में विकास का जो विभाजन है उसमें ये सेक्टर बहुत पीछे छूटा रहा है इनके इश्यूज इनका अपग्रेडेशन इनमें कैसे नई तकनीक को लेके आया जाए इनकी जिंदगियों को कैसे बदला जाए इनके बारे में पब्लिक परसेप्शन के ऊपर कैसे काम किया जाए ये तमाम सारे पहलू छूटे हुए रह रहे थे तो इसलिए टी वी को ये लगा कि जिस वक्त देश में बार बार डबल इंजन की सरकार की बात की जा रही है हम डबल इंजन के विकास की बात करें हम आपके पहिए और अपनी भाषा इन दोनों को एक साथ लेकर के विकास की इस डबल इंजन की जो गति है जो पहिए हैं उनको आगे लेके चलें और ये करना उस जिम्मेदारी को निभाना है जिस जिम्मेदारी के साथ इंसान ने सबसे पहले एक पहिया बनाया था तो इसी कमिटमेंट के साथ में टी वी ग्रुप हम सभी लोग टी वी नेटवर्क इसके लिए कमिटेड है कि ट्रा, रोड ट्रांसपोर्टर्स के जो आ, जो मसाइल हैं जो मुद्दे हैं जो उनके इश्यूज़ हैं तकनीक से लेकर के लाइफ स्टाइल से लेकर के बेसिक अवेयरनेस से लेकर के अपग्रेडेशन तक तमाम सारे पहलुओं पर इन पर हम लोग बातचीत करें और लोगों को बताया जाए कि क्यों कैसे और किस तरह से ये बहुत महत्वपूर्ण सेक्टर आपका ये बदल रहा है इसको बदलना चाहिए और इसके प्रति एक रिस्पेक्ट एक आदर एक सद्भाव और एक सुविचार के साथ में हमें आगे बढ़ना चाहिए तो ये मुझे लगता है कि हमारे आ, हमारे पूरे कार्यक्रम के आयोजन के पीछे की पूर्व पीठिका है ये उसका लबो लबाव है और आज दिन भर इसके ऊपर चर्चा करेंगे मुझे उम्मीद है कि ये सेशन हम सब लोगों के लिए बहुत उपयोगी साबित होगा धन्यवाद All right we also have our chief guest Shri Ashish Kundra Principal Secretary Cum Commissioner Transport Department Delhi Government sir may I please welcome you on stage may I also welcome Rajneesh to honor our chief guest thank you Sir may I please welcome you to tv9 transport conclave leaders of road transport conclave this is our delhi edition request you to please join us here and share your words of wisdom thank you whichever language uh good morning everyone at the outset uh, let me congratulate you uh, tv9 for organizing this uh, program on a subject which is of topical importance and as was being as i was walking in i was listening and I it was uh, it's a fact that this is a subject which has been on the back burner for a very long time bahut barson se iske upar koi baat na charcha na niti bani lekin aap sab ke sath ye saajha karte hue mujhe khushi hai is baat ki ke पिछले कुछ बरसों में केंद्र सरकार ने और तमाम राज्य सरकारों ने एक अभूतपूर्व एक क्रांति किस्म की आ रही है इस सेक्टर में जो इलेक्ट्रिक मोबिलिटी 
मतलब आज से पाँच दस साल पहले आपको ग्रीन नंबर प्लेट की कार्स या बसें शहर के अंदर नहीं दिखती थी और आज आप चले जाइए दिल्ली में तो स्कूटर कार ऑटो रिक्शा इवन बसेस आपको ग्रीन नंबर प्लेट की नज़र आती हैं और उसकी वजह ये है कि सबसे पहले भारत सरकार की एक नीति आई जिसको फेम स्कीम कहा गया फेम स्कीम के तहत जो मैन्युफैक्चरर्स हैं दे वर इंसेंटिवाइज टू प्रोड्यूस मैन्युफैक्चर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स इन इंडिया एंड यूल बी सरप्राइज टू नो टुडे दैट देर आर एटलीस्ट सिक्स इलेक्ट्रिक बस मैन्युफैक्चरर्स एंड दिस इज हैपन्ड इन अ स्पैन ऑफ जस्ट फाइव इयर्स सो बस मैन्युफैक्चरर्स हु आर अर्लियर मेकिंग डीजल और सी एन जी बसेज ऑलमोस्ट ओवर नाइट दे हैव क्रिएटेड असेंबली लाइन्स विच आर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इलेक्ट्रिक बसेज एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द कम्पोनेंट्स विच आर बींग यूज आर एक्चुअली मेड इन इंडिया सो इट्स अ वेरी बिग थिंग दैट्स नंबर वन द सेकेंड थिंग इज दैट इन द टू व्हीलर सेगमेंट इफ यू लुक देर आर न्यू प्लेयर्स विच हैव इमर्ज इन द मार्केट द ट्रेडिशनल मार्केट वॉज डोमिनेटेड बाई लेटर से बजाज ऑटो और टी वी एस और सच कंपनीज बट नाउ इन द इलेक्ट्रिक स्पेस देर आर न्यू प्लेयर्स विच हैव कम आपने कभी आज तक ओला का नाम नहीं सुना था एथर का नाम नहीं सुना था ओकिनावा का नाम नहीं सुना था ये तमाम जो टू व्हीलर मैन्युफैक्चरर्स हैं दे आर नाउ डोमिनेटिंग द स्पेस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक टू व्हीलर्स इन आई आई थिंक दे हैव डन अ फैंटेस्टिक जॉब इन द थ्री व्हीलर सेगमेंट अगेन वी आर हैविंग न्यू प्लेयर्स इन द मार्केट The second thing which has happened is that the state governments like Delhi, I can speak for Delhi, that we came out with our electric vehicle policy three years ago, and we gave purchase incentives to people. The idea was, on the one hand, government of India has rolled out a policy which is lowering the cost of production. On the other hand, we are giving incentives to people to buy electric vehicles, and I'm happy to share that last year. Uh, Delhi registered 12 percent of total sales were electric. If you look at the numbers in taxi segment, 50 percent of taxis registered in Delhi were electric. In the three-wheeler goods segment, 69 percent of vehicles which were registered were electric. So it's a revolution. That's why I started off by saying, "ये क्रांति है." इसका मतलब silent revolution, silent in every sense because electric vehicles are silent. but uh, people are you know without noticing the change suddenly 5 years down the line you'll see the scale of change which has happened in the bus segment i'm happy to share that delhi has signed contracts for nearly 6000 electric buses today we have 800 electric buses on road and by the end of the year this number will go up to 2000 aur agle 1.5 saal ke andar andar 6000 buses आपको इलेक्ट्रिक दिल्ली में नजर आएंगी इट्स अ फिनल चेंज विथ सिक्स थाउजेंड बसेज डेली विल बी नंबर टू इन द वर्ल्ड द लार्जेस्ट बस फ्लीट इन एनी सिटी टूडे एनी वेयर इन द वर्ल्ड इज इन शेंजन विच इज इन चाइना आफ्टर दैट इज सेंटियागो सेंटियागो में 2,400 बसें हैं चिली में एंड डेली विल क्रॉस दैट नंबर अर्ली नेक्स्ट ईयर सो आई थिंक इट्स अ ह्यूज चेंज विच वी आर uh trying to bring in and uh something worth taking note of similarly you know when we started on this journey uh, people used to say if i buy an electric car or a scooter where will i charge it and i'll i'm happy to share you know we have the most dense charging network in india there is a bureau of energy efficiency report that if 100 units of electricity are consumed from chargers anywhere in the country 55 of them are from delhi 55% of energy usage from chargers is in delhi we have nearly 5000 public charging points private chargers or battery swapping stations and we are expanding them we are in the next 2 years going to take up this number to 18000 which means if you have an electric vehicle a car or a scooter or whatever anywhere you drive uh you should not feel the discomfort where will i get the charging station for that and uh i think for i'll share a very interesting statistic with you that cng which has been around for 25 years in delhi electric vehicle policy has been there only for 3 years 
Last year, the number of electric vehicles registered were more than the number of CNG vehicles registered. It is a huge, huge transition which is happening. And the reason is that I feel in CNG or conventional fuel, your expansion is tied to the fuel station. Jab tak a petrol pump nahi hoga, CNG pump nahi hoga, jahan pe hoga, wahi pe ho sakta hai. In electric, you have democratized charging, decentralized it, it's plug and play. Could you have imagined that you have to put in bus, you have to put petrol, diesel, CNG, and you have to put it on the station. Today, you have seen bus to charge bus. It's a sight to be seen that you plug in a bus like a mobile phone and you are charging it. So, uh, I think uh, in the next uh, three, four years, there is going to be a sea change because the government of India has come out with another scheme which is uh, called the production link incentive for advanced chemistry cell. Electric may keval ek cheese ki dependency imports pe hai, it is cell. Kyunke cell Hindustan mein nahi bante. Do saal ke andar andar, Hindustan mein cell manufacturing start ho jayegi. और इलेक्ट्रिक व्हील व्हीकल किसी भी इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल की 40 फीसद जो कीमत है वो बैटरी की है अगर बैटरी की कीमत आधी हो गई आप इमेजिन करिए कि उसकी कीमत अगर कन्वेंशनल फ्यूल व्हीकल से परचेज कॉस्ट कम हो गई देन इट इज़ अ नो ब्रेनर दैट पीपल विल डेफिनेटली स्टार्ट अडॉप्टिंग इट इवन मोर फास्टर देन वॉट दे आर डूइंग नाव सो आई विल नॉट से मच आई थिंक आई एम डिलाइटेड टू बी हेयर टूडे and uh, thank you for uh, so graciously inviting me. Uh, in the end, I will just say, uh, while I've been talking about Delhi, it is not just a story which is unfolding in Delhi. It is a phenomena which is happening across the country. You go to Bombay, uh, you'll see electric buses. You go to Bangalore, you'll see uh, two-wheelers and uh, cars, uh, etc. You go to Calcutta, you go to smaller towns of Uttar Pradesh, uh, you will see people at least using e-rickshaws, if not cars or scooters. So uh, every segment of society is embracing electric mobility and I think we owe it to the future generations that we clean up the air that we breathe. Thank you very much. Mr. Kundra, thank you very much, sir, for sharing progress update made by Delhi Transport Department. Very heartening to know we will have 6,000 EVs, largest anywhere in the world, in Delhi in next two to three years from now. I think that deserves a loud, loud round of applause. <laughs> well, we hope to have you listen to all the transporters, sir, who will share their updates. Uh, the advancements, progress they have made, some of the challenges, bottlenecks that they are currently experiencing. Hopefully, you'll be able to assist them. But before we do that, let me also quickly invite Rajneesh Kochkave, Head Sales Marketing Continental, to welcome the audience. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta. And thank you, speakers coming before me. And thank you, all of you, for uh, making this uh, making to this place, I believe our uh, traffic ka bura hal hai, and that is why the whole event also has got a little delayed. So a very warm welcome. Uh, this is our second edition that we're doing. Pehla humne Bangalore mein kiya tha. We'll do four such events before we uh, culminate in the mega event. Or ye basically it's a brainchild between uh, when we partnered TV9. It was very important for us also to understand how do we recognize and uh, recognize and reward remarkable people <coughs> excuse me who are doing wonderful uh, work in terms of transportation industry and as rightly said by uh, one of our predecessors that transport as a function transport as as a sector not only is you know creating employment not only is instrumental in ensuring that your toothpaste reaches us every morning when when we wake up but it also is now a huge, uh, I would say, on the cusp of nation building. And if you look at the uh, Abhijo government and national uh, logistics policy we announced, kari hai, we are all looking at uh, digitalization of the entire systems. Hum ye cha rahe that if different functions jo hai, wo ek saath, ek platform pe aake kaam karna shuru kare. 
एंड वी आर लुकिंग टूवर्ड्स ऑटोमेशन ये जो बहुत सारा मैनुअल हो रहा है काम अलग अलग साइलोज में लोग काम कर रहे हैं दैट इज वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू गेट अवे विथ एंड वी वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग इन मोर एफिशियंसीज वी वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग इन आई वुड से मोर कोऑर्डिनेशन सिंक्रोनाइजेशन बिटवीन आपके रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट है रेलवेज हैं आपके वाटरवेज हैं आपके एयरवेज हैं तो बहुत सारी चीज़ें हैं जो चीज़ों को यहाँ से वहाँ मूव करने में मदद कर रही हैं हमारा यहाँ पे चार चीज़ों पे फोकस ज़्यादा रहेगा वी आर बेसिकली लुकिंग एट फोर क्रिटिकल थिंग्स फर्स्ट डेफिनेटली इज रोड सेफ्टी आई थिंक दिस इज़ वन ऑफ द बर्निंग टॉपिक्स दैट वी हियर एवरी डे रोड सेफ्टी हमारे लिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है सस्टेनेबिलिटी वी हैव सीन जिस तरह की चेंजेस हम देख रहे हैं वी कैन नॉट ट्रीट मदर नेचर द वे वी हैव बिन ट्रीटिंग वी विल हैव टू डू समथिंग फॉर अ सस्टेनेबल इन्वायरमेंट टेक्नोलॉजी ये सारा करने के लिए हमको टेक्नोलॉजी एंड देन लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट इज इनोवेशन सो दीज आर द फोर पिलर्स दैट वील टॉक अबाउट आई वुड बी प्रेजेंटिंग समथिंग एल्स ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ द डे इन विच आई टॉक अबाउट द डिफरेंट टेक्नोलॉजीज दैट कॉन्टिनेंटल ब्रिंग्स इन टू दिस स्फेयर ऑफ थ्री सिक्सटी डिग्री फ्लीट सोल्यूशन दैट वी हैव हम किस तरीके से मोबिलिटी को और एफिशियंट बना सकते हैं हम किस तरह से मोबिलिटी को सस्टेनेबल बना रहे हैं एंड गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया का भी हम अगर देखें सो वी आर इन वी आर वॉन्टिंग टू रिड्यूस एट फ्रॉम थर्टी थ्री परसेंट टू ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट कार्बन एमिशन की हम बात कर रहे हैं कॉन्टिनेंटल ग्लोबली इज कमिटेड हम दो हज़ार पचास तक हर चीज़ रिसाइकल करेंगे तो कार्बन फुटप्रिंट कार्बन न्यूट्रैलिटी इन पर हमारा भी बहुत बहुत ज़्यादा फोकस है एंड वी वुड लाइक टू डू लॉड ऑफ थिंग्स इन इंडिया एज वेल आई मीन दिस इज़ वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट इकोनॉमीज फास्टेस्ट ग्रोइंग इकोनॉमीज एंड वी डू सी दिस विल बी द प्लेइंग फील्ड ऑफ द फ्यूचर सो आई विल जस्ट रन अ वीडियो विच टॉक्स अबाउट द जर्नी ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंटल हम लगभग डेढ़ सौ साल पुरानी कंपनी है डेढ़ सौ साल से ज़्यादा हमने वन फिफ्टी ईयर्स टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन में सेलिब्रेट किया था सो या कैन वी प्ले द वीडियो प्लीज so as a 150 year old organization that was a small glimpse into whatever we have done in the past and uh, it gives me a lot of pride to see an organization older than 150 years and still relevant matlab aaj ke rate mein aap dekhte hoge 30 40 saal se zyada life cycle bahut sare matlab iconic brands like kodak and all they have uh, you know so i am pretty excited i'll have lot of lot to share but i am uh, also excited to hear the different discussion that we have planned the different people that uh, we would want to hear and thank you once again uh, for uh, being a part of this thing thank you so much
Thank you, Rajneesh. Thank you, Panni. All right, it's time to begin with our first session. Let me first quickly tell you what it is about and what we're hoping to discuss before we call our panelists. Logistic legards to leaders. Now, India wants to become a $30 trillion economy by 2047, which is 100 years after independence. The Vision Bharat document, which is expected to be released by the Prime Minister by end of the year, is going to set the ball rolling for what will be our short-term and long-term plans and the roadmap ahead. Now, logistics, as we all know, plays a very crucial role, a very important role in our GDP, as well as to take us forward in our journey to realize the $30 trillion dream. In this panel, we want to understand what are the current existing bottlenecks, issues with the logistics sector, with transporters who can discuss the roadmap ahead, as well as, remember, it's been one year since the new national logistics policy was rolled out in September of 2022. What progresses have been made and what can we do bet better? Let's discuss that. Let me please call in Mr. Ashish Gupta, Chief Executive Officer, Best Roadways. And Mr. Rajiv Gupta, owner, Caravan Roadways. Let's, let's lift some spirits, please. A little louder, if we can. A little louder, please. Thank you. Hello, hello. All right, here I am once again. My name is Shweta Kothari. Thank you very, very much for joining us here today. Uh, this is the second time we're doing it this year. This is the second part of our ongoing conclave. We kicked off in Bengaluru. Very interesting takeaways that we got from Bengaluru. Uh, and primarily so on some of the existing challenges that road transport sector, uh, mostly people in roadways and logistics, continue to face. Let me first get a question from Mr. Ashish. Uh, Mr. Ashish, you know, as far as challenges are concerned, because we're talking about being leaders, we want to know where we are legards at the moment. Currently, we are facing the issues, uh, basically, the all the na NACAs in the post. Mm -hmm. We are facing the issues with them only. We are taking up with the government. All the RTO post has been removed and these these days, all the GPS is coming up, and check post has been a dreary issues with us from a long time. So now they have removed, and we are moving ahead. And now these days, infrastructure is growing in, in all India. So I think that is the move. Okay. Well, I see things also happening. Uh, Mr. Rajiv, you know, as far as being laggards, uh, and, and I'm sure India has made a lot of progress especially after logistics policy was also put in place. I know many of you are still struggling to get the industry status that you're hoping to. So uh, to set the ball rolling, what are the existing challenges? First of all, I'd like to say that the Lagarde's term is debatable. I don't really agree with this. We've already been leaders in many things. It might be a big surprise for many of the audience that we are the biggest providers of employment after agriculture, road transport industry. So we are already a leader there. We are the biggest source of revenue for state governments and central government. So we, you can't really call us a laggard okay. in any way. Fair enough. Where we need to change and what we expect maybe going forward is how we adapt to the technology and the, uh, the better infrastructure which is already almost in place. The logistics policy which will be, which is implemented but the effects will be coming maybe two or three years uh, down the line. Maybe we need to change the check post system. In fact, we don't need to change it, we need to abolish it. 
Because after GST, why do we need the check posts? Maybe the state governments, they have their own agenda, which, which is not the, this is not the correct forum to discuss, discuss that. But going forward, I think new technology, artificial intelligence, these things can be really positive for our industry. And we are not laggards, we will be leaders very soon. We are already leaders in many aspects. All right, thank you for that. I think we have set the ball rolling on what are the challenges. But let's remember, it's been one year since the new logistics policy was put into place. The reasons were clear. Government wants to see logistics and transport sector moving in the right direction. I think it's under, it understands how important a backbone logistics and road transport network is. India takes a lot of pride in having a very complex road transport network. I want to uh, you know, come to you first, Ashish. Uh, one year since the policy was rolled out, what has changed on ground? Have you seen any change at all? And if not, what were you hoping would have changed post the implementation of a new logistics policy? Yeah, I think the systems have changed and it will take time. It will take a minimum two to more three years to come down on the ground position of each and everything. So these days, changes has coming, but it is not a one, one day change to become. In, uh, henceforth, the change will come at least three to four years will take. And these days, after the post GST, pre-COVID, and the too many situations are happening in India. So the change will come and the policy will be on the ground at least two, after two years. Okay, two years time is what you're giving it, two years time is what you're also giving it, sir. But Rajiv, you know, if you, if you compare where the network stands today as opposed to where it was about 10 years ago, a lot of us personally experience a lot has changed. There's a very robust uh, highways, the pace at which it's being developed expressways, the pace at which they're being developed. Uh, as far as, you know, connectivity is concerned, it's getting better. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. The connectivity is much better. The quality of the roads is much better. Obviously, we need to change our driving habits. Here is where, where the technology will come in. Technology will help us to drive better. Obviously, it's not a, uh, it's not a really proud moment that we have so many incidents. Uh, we need to improve. But definitely the network is getting better, it's better and there is a, it will get much more better from, uh, from here. Bharat Mala project, which the Honorable uh, Road Transport Minister, he's really taken it uh, front on. So obviously the, the, uh, the, uh, the network is going to help us a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, you, yes, please. Adas is also helping us in this thing. Sorry? Advanced driving system is also helping us. Okay. Okay. And you know, you, you also touched on COVID and COVID was also a very important talking point in Bengaluru as well, where some of your colleagues uh, were not quite happy with the progress we have made since COVID and after COVID. What sort of impact have you had during COVID particularly? And can you now say that the industry has recovered from that Im impact? Yeah, that time was a very tough time for everyone because the, all the uh, trucks were standing on the road. And now I think uh, most of us will agree the market has recovered well and uh, we have recovered very well uh, post-COVID. Okay. So when you say we have recovered well, run us through some of the key numbers. I know during COVID there was not any movement, but even then, transporters were still actively applying. There were people uh, on the roads, they were on highways because, well, good goods, services, some of them had to move. People had to survive. Economy could not collapse. But from there to where you are, do you have some numbers that you can share with us as to what sort of progress and growth you've seen post-COVID? The exact numbers for us to define will be pretty difficult. Okay, but broadly, you used one term that we had to move. So that had to move is responsibility. We were responsible. And we are responsible. Because we moved, the nation moved. Hadn't we moved, you can imagine the scenario. Mm -hmm. So it was the road transport industry which helped the industry sustain. So exact figures, I think it will be difficult for us to discuss or reveal. Uh, we, we don't really know the exact figures. But obviously we have almost recovered from the entire COVID scene. Us being a uh, labor centric industry, we were definitely more affected because a lot of more people were involved. But right now, I think we've almost recovered. Okay. 
Yes, Mr. Ashish. Yeah, we were the, the only ones, we and our drivers were the only ones who were moving the country that of time. Of course. In the hard times. Because of us only, because our drivers basically, we uh, helped to uh, supply the oxygen and the everything, mask and every health and uh, food industry as well. Mm. We were the only one. That time was a very tough time, the direct told you. But these days, I think post-COVID, uh, we have recovered it. And if you compare pre-COVID and post-COVID, this time is better than pre-COVID. This time is better than pre-COVID. Well, right. Very, very glad to hear that. You know, we keep talking about COVID. The reason being, uh, I think all of us were ordering in when we were sitting at home during COVID. Show of hands, how many of you were not ordering in? How many of you were still going out buying stuff during COVID? Show of hands, how many of you were actively ordering in on a daily basis, groceries, food items, anything? Show of hands, please. All of us, all of us. And how was that made possible? Well, because of gentlemen like the two, sorry, two Mr. Guptas here, who kept their drivers, who kept their buses, who kept their people moving on ground. So you have to give it to transporters for being resilient. You know, we often celebrate doctors of the country. We often celebrate people who are on the front line. I think all of them are on the front line as well. So yeah, I think we have to give it to the transporters of the country too. Thank you. Thank you. And now that we are here, sir, we are looking at five state elections, looking at a general mega national election around the corner and a lot of capex uh, that is being pumped into the system to develop infrastructure. And this is going to be the way forward at least for the next six to seven months. I think we can all agree on that. There is also a lot of movement of goods, movement of people, movement of services, more manufacturing happening than ever. All of that points towards greater mobility, greater transportation. Are the numbers looking good, Ashish? Yeah, I think uh, Rajiv ji will tell this question better. Okay. Yeah. The numbers as related to more manufacturing, obviously they are already improving and they will keep on improving. The Make in India initiative by the central government is actually showing colors. A lot of things which are being imported will, won't be imported in the future. They will be manufactured right here. here. So when, we when the things are manufactured here, there's a two-way movement. The raw material first has to be input, and then the uh, finished product is uh, out, uh, outward movement is made. So it's a double dual movement. Plus, obviously, the things which we are importing now, or we were importing uh, earlier, they are already being exported. I think Continental is one big example. Okay, all they right. Are, they are manufacturing big here, which was not the case earlier, maybe a decade ago. Uh, I'll, maybe Continental was having tie-ups with uh, Indian companies, Indian tire companies. Mm -hmm. So now they are independent and they are, I think they, in the future or right now they might be exporting their tires. Absolutely. I mean so India is becoming… Uh, uh, this is one example how the movement is improving and it will keep on improving. You must have heard about the electronic industry, the chips being manufactured here. So all these things they will be adding up, they are already adding up. They are adding up, absolutely adding up. Um, I'll, I'll just add in one thing. Yes. All the big iconic brands in the world are coming up in India and investing and making their plants over here. So it's like for post 10 years from now, India will be shining only, like Modi ji is saying every time, India is shining. And make in India, as Rajiv ji said. So apart from this six, post six month election, India will be shining till 2030 for sure. And maybe all that. 2034. Well, that is a timeline I think we can live to uh, just about uh, 10 years from now. So hopefully things will revolutionize and change. A lot of it also depends on how the political scenario will pan out in the next okay. six to eight months. But, you know, staying on with the movement of people, movement of goods. Uh, I know you're not giving us much numbers, but that's all right. We, we, we understand that as far as business is concerned. But let's go back to some of the legards because we also want to know, chat. I, I know we're not calling industry legard, but I'm calling the challenges, the bottlenecks, calling them out and calling them out so as to do better, to mitigate. What are your existing challenges? I know you mentioned cost efficiency is also one of them, where government of India is also hoping that the, the cost of movement, the cost of logistics should come down to about 8% of the GDP. Do you think you're there yet? Is the cost efficiency uh, being met? No, we are not there yet, but a lot of like multimodal transportation is coming. The uh, water transportation is also increasing day by day and the infrastructure is developing. So definitely the cost will come do go down, but it will take another one, one and a half year to be the cost to be 
in the down for the sector. Okay. And if I were to ask you, Rajiv, what are you expecting from the government? I know we don't have a representation, but we did. Uh, what are you hoping the government will do now, now, to make it better for the, for the entire sector, the entire industry? First of all, not increase any more taxes. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. And, okay, that was the lighter side of it. But at least the clearance of the bottlenecks, GST has been um, almost a success. It's a success. We'll call it a success. But there are, there are certain, still certain things which need to be uh, coped up with GST. We don't need state borders. When all the documents even for the vehicle or for the goods that are being transported, they are available online. Why do we need borders? Why, why do we need people stopping the vehicles, the authorities stopping the vehicles and, and checking them? They can check it online. It's almost um, uh, real-time checking. So the, uh, these things, the port movements are better, but there, obviously there is scope for improvement in almost everything. There is still uh, more infrastructure required. The major ports are being expanded. So these small, small bottlenecks, they need to be improved. Maybe not everything requires government intervention. But at least uh, guidance for, uh, from the So end. better cross-border movement. Uh, I think uh, the Bhaiya said, uh, correctly said the things, the manual intervention of the government official should be less. Like the more AI technology and everything like income tax are adopted already in India should be more. The GST department should also come up with the more less intervention of the manual persons. That will be the like our request to the government. Okay, so less manual intervention, more digitization. I think that's the, the ask of our experts who are sitting here with us. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. We will be discussing. We continue to discuss yeah. this Thank story. you, Team Continental and T, uh, TV9. It's Thank, an you Thank you very much, sir. Thank you It's been an honor. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, let me also now call in Sankit Gupta, owner Express Roadways, and Mr. Deepak Dhingra, director DGFC, to join us, please. <laughs> Deepak, Sanchit, you've been listening into the conversation. Uh, I don't know how much you agree with, I'm sure you do, because you know, you're all colleagues in the same business. But let me start off from where we left off, and that is uh, la manual intervention, check posts, constant interfering, stopping of vehicles, that many of your colleagues are saying is proving to be a major problem, where you have to manually stand, that, that doesn't just stop your vehicles from freely moving, but also you know, perhaps ups the cost of transportation. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely I would agree to that. So when we speak about reducing the cost to 8% logistics cost, uh, road transport cost, uh, contributes almost 70% of the business volume that is happening. Uh, if I talk about today's time, the uptime of these vehicles is around 13 days out of 30 days. So there's a lot of inefficiency that has already cropped up in the system, uh, which we really need to work on which will reduce the fixed cost and bring in the cost optimization. So definitely this is one of the biggest bottlenecks that we have currently and we really need to work hard uh, together as a unity uh, to you know, reduce this cost and move things forward. These are efficiencies which are not contributing to anybody's growth. Okay. These are only hindering our growth and increasing the cost of operation. So definitely these should be minimized going forward. Right. And I'm not sure there's much you can do there, Deepak, can you? I think it's, it's the government that has to do that. State road transport departments have to be in sync with one another. And perhaps the, the digitization dream that we have has to be finally realized on ground. इतनी चीजें खत्म हो चुकी हैं। आपको जब भी आप जाते हैं, सेल टैक्स वगैरह पे जब भी जाते हैं, पहले सेल टैक्स था, अब जीएसटी आ गया, तो जीएसटी में इंडस्ट्री के लिए इजी कर दिया काम, कि आपको कहीं भी कहीं ट्रांसपोर्ट करना है, स्टेट टू स्टेट करना है या अदर स्टेट में करना है, तो आप इजी कर दिया उसके लिए। तो ऐसे ही जैसे जैसे गवर्नमेंट इंप्रूव कर रही है आज जीएसटी को इनपुट कर रहे हैं या कोई भी अदर कंट्री ले रही है उसको तो इसमें इंडस्ट्री तो बहुत अच्छी चल रही है बट कई-कई जगह पे जैसे अब जीएसटी का जो गवर्नमेंट ने टैग के साथ कर दिया है जो आपके फास्ट टैग वगैरह हुए हैं उससे मॉनिटर कर रहे हैं तो उनके लिए तो इजी कर दिया ना तो वो 
आप अननेसरी हमारे को ट्रांसपोर्ट को अरेस्टमेंट करते हैं कि जाओ बॉर्डर पे जाओ पुलिस वालों को खर्चा दो फिर आगे चलते हैं तो ये चीज़ें हैं ना हमारे को अरेस्टमेंट होती है इन चीज़ों को तो गवर्नमेंट को इनको ये करना चाहिए था कि भाई आपको अगर किसी बंदे पर डाउट है आप उसको चेक करो चेक करके आप आगे बढ़िए फिर तो हर बंदे को आप एक जैसा ट्रांसपोर्ट ना करें जो बड़ा ट्रांसपोर्टर होगा वो ऐसा काम नहीं करेगा जो बड़े बड़े ट्रांसपोर्ट होंगे वो काम बिल्कुल भी ऐसा नहीं करेंगे बट छोटा ट्रांसपोर्ट समझ आती है कि उसको लर्निंग स्टेज पे बड़ा वाला अपनी रेपोटेशन के ऊपर देखता है जी तो आपको गवर्नमेंट को ये समझना चाहिए कि जो इतना बड़ा टैक्स पेयर है आप उसको इजिली मूव अप करो बिल्कुल तो आप कह रहे हैं कि बॉर्डर पे रोकना हैरसमेंट करना और पैसे देना ये आज भी एक कॉमन प्रैक्टिस है कॉमन है आ, हम हम काफ़ी करप्शन मुक्त भारत की बात करते हैं पर ऐसा नहीं है नहीं करप्शन के आप क्या ना पुलिस वालों को जब भी आप बॉर्डर पर जाते हैं हर बॉर्डर पे एक आपको पे करना पड़ता है जी तो ये पोस्ट चेक पोस्ट हटेंगे जी तो तभी ये चीजें क्लियर होंगी ना तो अब चेक पोस्ट लगा रखे हैं तो अननेसरी वो लेने के लिए पैसा लेने के लिए चलान करते हैं आज के डेट में इतने चलान हो गए हैं ट्रांसपोर्टर चलान से इतना ज्यादा परेशान हो चुका है ऑनलाइन चलान कर देते हैं जिसका मन करता है वो चलान करके भेज देता है इन चीजों पर तो हम मरी इन चीजों पर हमारे बहुत ज्यादा वो प्रॉब्लम हो रही है इसके अंदर तो यही है कि जैसे जैसे चीज़ें आ रही हैं चेंज हो रही हैं आज के डेट में आप ऑनलाइन कर दिया सारा चलान ऑनलाइन आ गए हैं पहले चलान आते थे पहले चीज़ें आती टैग हो गए हैं सब चीज़ हो रही है तो ठीक है तो आप जैसे जैसे इम्प्रूवमेंट दिख रही है तो हम भी उसके साथ ही गवर्नमेंट के साथ ही चल रहे हैं लेकिन जी को एक तरफ रख के और इम्प्रूव करना चाहिए ओके सो फ्रॉम वॉट वट आई एम अंडरस्टैंडिंग संकेत जी है जिसने चीज़ों को आसान बनाया made it easy for people but at the same time you have uh, vehicles being stopped at the borders every state border so interstate movement remi- remains an impediment it still remains an impediment and there hasn't been much progress there uh, like sir said it is quite evident that there are harassment at each and every border despite government intervention despite involvement of different uh, authorities but these things still prevail and there's not much solution that has happened over the years Uh, हमने रोड इंफ्रा क्रिएट कर दिया हमने फास्ट uh, टैक्स लगा दिए ईजियर मूवमेंट कर दिया बट जब तक ये बॉटल नेक्स नहीं हटेंगे तब तक व्हीकल की मूवमेंट फास्ट नहीं हो पाएगी हम ज़्यादा डिस्टेंस नहीं कवर कर पाएंगे और कहीं ना कहीं कॉस्ट वहीं की वहीं रहेगी ओके ढिंगा जी एक सवाल जो अक्सर सबके आई थिंक जहन में आता है वो ये है कि हम अक्सर डिजिटाइजेशन बढ़ चढ़ के बात करते हैं डिजिटल इंडिया इज़ अ ड्रीम दैट वी वांट टू मैनिफेस्ट एंड आल्सो होपफुली वन डे रियलाइज हाउ फार हैव वी मूव्ड एज फार एज ट्रांसपोर्ट इज कंसर्न कितना डिजिटाइजेशन हुआ है फास्ट टैग्स जी एस टी ई लॉग्स ई चालान काफ़ी लोगों को लगता है काफ़ी डिजिटाइजेशन हो गया जिससे कि अब तक रोड ट्रांसपोर्टर्स की uh, स्थिति सुधर जानी चाहिए थी क्या ऐसा हुआ है नहीं हुआ है जो आप डिजिटलाइज कह रहे हैं जैसे जी थोड़ा सा माइक सर आज के जो आज के डेट में आप ये बता रहे हैं जो आईटी से रिलेटेड जो ट्रांसपोर्ट में क्या इम्प्रूवमेंट हुई है तो उसमें काफ़ी चीज़ों को इम्प्रूवमेंट हुआ है जैसे आज के पहले हम क्या करते थे फास्ट टैग में जाते थे टैग टोल टैक्स में जाते थे तो हम पे करते थे कैश पे करते थे तो वो सारा ऑटोमेटिकली फास्ट टैग हो गया तो उससे आपको ऑटोमेटिकली कंप्यूटराइज सारी चीज़ें आ गई है फिर आप उसके बाद जाते हैं जब चलान कटता है तो चलान में आपको ऑनलाइन आपको दिख जाता है कि भाई ये चलान कट गया तो इजीली हो गया कि आपको इजीली इन्फॉर्मेशन हो गया आप ड्राइवर को आप प्लेस करते हैं आपको ड्राइवर को आप चेक करते हैं कि भाई ये ड्राइवर जेनवन लिया या नहीं है पहले ये इस इस प्रोसेस को बहुत टाइम लगता था कि आप ड्राइवर वेरीफाई करो कि ये जेनवन है या नहीं है आप इसको ऑनलाइन कर दिए विद इन अ वन सेकेंड या टू मिनट्स के अंदर आपको ड्राइवर वेरीफाई कर सकते हैं कि ये जेनवन ड्राइवर है या नहीं है इवन आप कोई भी गाड़ी आप करते हैं किसी दूसरे ट्रेवेंडर से उसके ऊपर कोई चलान तो नहीं है तो हमारे लिए मतलब कई चीज़ें बाय करने के लिए भी और कहीं सेल करने के लिए भी सबके लिए बहुत इजी कर दिया गवर्नमेंट ने और इवन बहुत अच्छा हो गया कि जिससे हम आगे के लिए फ्यूचर में और इम्प्रूव कर रहे हैं और जैसे जैसे ये चीज़ें और इम्प्रूव हो रही हैं ठीक है मतलब आप ये कह सकते हैं कि भाई सेवेंटी आज की डेट में इंडस्ट्री इम्प्रूव कर गई है अभी भी थर्टी परसेंट है अब जैसे आपने जी का भी बोला जी के अंदर सारे पोर्टल्स में टल जाता है ई बिल कटता है तब आप जी में आगे बढ़ते हैं वरना तो गाड़ी चलती ही नहीं है दूसरी जगह से तीसरी जगह जा नहीं सकते उसी जगह पे आपको पॉइंट पे जाना पड़ता है और उसमें भी कई कई जगह पे इनको थोड़ा सा इम्प्रूव करना है कि आप कस्टमर कहता है भी मेरा दूसरा वेयर हाउसिंग है या कुछ है उसमें जब तक वो वहाँ से क्लियर नहीं होगी तब तक वो जी एस भी नहीं जाते तो ये चीज़ें हैं थोड़ी छोटी 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 चीज़ें जो इम्प्रूव करनी पड़ेगी इसको छोटी चीज़ें हैं जो इम्प्रूव करनी आई थिंक वी कैन ऑल अग्री ऑन दैट ऑल्सो एज इंडियंस आई थिंक ए वेरी एस्पिरेशनल आई हैव टू से 
things improve five years down the line, we want them to improve further and we want them to improve further. That is one of the reasons we exist as journalists, to keep challenging the world order, Indian order, and keep hoping to look better. I know things have improved because, as you said, we were fast track. We were standing in Delhi and Noida flyover for long hours. There was a time when we were standing in 20-25 minutes, we were standing in peace, we were standing in peace, and we were standing in peace. And fast track, today's process is very fast. So the good thing is, because we are aspirational, we keep finding faults so that we can do better at them. Right? I think that is, the, that is the end goal to achieve. But let's also talk about some of the progresses that we have made. I want to specifically talk about the national highways. I want to talk about state, you know, uh, road structures. What sort of progress can you see, Sanchit, at this point? Uh, you know, on national highways, we know we are developing at a very fast pace. We have a very active uh, road transport minister at the center, Mr. Nitin Gadkari, who every other day talks about the, the road, the kilometers of road we are building in an hour. Every day we have progress, every third week we have progress, that we are building so many kilometer road, build kar rahe, utna kilometer road build kar rahe. Kya on ground bhi aapko ye dekhne ko milta hai? Uh, definitely if I talk about the road infra that has been built across the country over the past five, seven years, it has been phenomenal. Uh, the way, uh, the quality of road and the uh, distance wise mapping or the mapping of road in current Indra, India's infrastructure, it has significantly improved over the years. So definitely we a plus mila hai humko where we are able to cover a larger distance and that has definitely been up over the years. So in terms of road infra, definitely a lot of work has been done and it is continuously been doing. So udhar kafi improvement hai. States may be? Yes. State roads have also improved significantly okay. in the past years. Okay, so state roads have improved, national highways have improved, and hopefully it will continue to improve. Uh, it's a very crucial time. It's a good thing that the conclave is now happening. It's not going to happen because elections are going to happen. And a lot of money will be pumped in to build, build better infrastructure in five states, nationally, all over. Things are going to change at a very fast clip in this country. Uh, and if you look at all the macro parameters, if we macro parameters, ki baat kare, movement of goods, movement of services, movement of people, everything is at an all-time high. In fact, better than pre-COVID levels in certain, certain cases. Kya business dobara se acha hua hai pre-COVID levels ke jitna ya usse bhi better? Ni COVID mein hamar ko learning sikhai hai. Ki hamar ko agar transport rukta hai na, to transport ki value dikhai hai market ke andar ki transport ke bina, aaj ki date mein India kuch nahi hai. मतलब पूरा पूरा वर्ल्ड ही कुछ नहीं है तो ये कोविड से पता लगता है कि अगर हम सब मिलके अगर ट्रांसपोर्ट चलता है तो सारी चीजें चलती हैं तो हमारे बिना ये चीजें नहीं है ये चीज मेरे को समझ आती है कि ट्रांसपोर्ट से ही सारी चीजें चल रही हैं और रही बात आप जो आप बता रहे थे कि रोड्स के ऊपर इंडियन रोड्स आज इतनी अच्छी हो चुकी हैं कि हम रेलवे से भी फास्ट चल रहे हैं अगर रेलवे की अगर रनिंग रनिंग एवरेज स्पीड आती है और हम उससे मतलब टेन मतलब डबल्स चल रहे हैं उसके ऊपर अगर दिल्ली बॉम्बे अगर गाड़ी जानी होती है तो वो मतलब हम 36 आवर्स में नॉर्मल गाड़ी आराम से पहुंच जाती है रेलवे इसको टाइम लगता है तो रेलवे भी उसमें इंप्रूव कर रही है तो इंडियन रोड्स तो टॉप ऑफ द लाइन है अभी तो बहुत अच्छे हाईवेज बन चुके हैं ड्राइवर को गाड़ी चलाना इजी हो गया है और हमारे जिस तरह के ट्रक्स आ रहे हैं मार्केट में वो भी बहुत अच्छे ट्रक्स हो गए तो इम्प्रूवमेंट तो बहुत ज़्यादा चल रहा है बहुत अच्छा इम्प्रूवमेंट है इसमें एक एक्सपेक्टेशन वन ऑफ द एक्सपेक्टेशन फ्रॉम ट्रांसपोर्टर्स इज ऑल्सो दैट दे विल प्रोवाइड बेटर वर्किंग कंडीशन टू देर एम्प्लॉज we talked about gig workers. There's a report that came out yesterday from Fair Work where we talked about gig workers. And gig workers, including delivery professionals, Ola Uber drivers, are in a very bad living condition. There is no policy for minimum wage. Working hours are difficult. There is no fair representation. These are some of the issues with drivers everywhere, commercial vehicle drivers specifically. Uh, what is the industry doing to make lives of your employees better? So, in terms of the industry, there is no platform where these issues are addressed currently. Mm -hmm. It is addressed on a macro level, but on a larger scale, not much is happening. Uh, as an organization, we are uh, working a lot on upskilling our uh, manpower, uh, be it the drivers or be it the uh, official people who are based out of our offices across India. So, we are working and investing a lot in upskilling. So, currently, this industry is facing a lot of iterations lot of uh, changes and people are not very much willing to come into here 
in this industry. So over the past seven years, we have significantly worked here and created a lot of manpower who do not belong to this industry, but now are doing very well in this industry. Uh, coming to the driver training, uh, we are very well aligned towards the driver training. We have a dedicated module which we are running across the country uh, to enhance the safety levels of our vehicle, safety of people on road, and definitely better delivery qualities. So we have been continuously working over the years, but as an industry, I do not see any open platform where these issues are discussed and really worked on. So that lack is there. Okay, there is a lack. Thank you for admitting that. It's interesting. The, the report that I'm talking about came out yesterday. Uh, we at TV9, we picked up one of the key, few key highlights of the report. And the report essentially talked about life of drivers, delivery personals, and people who are on road applied as gig worker, workers, employed as gig workers. Gig workers essentially move between jobs. Now, this industry also, also, applies a lot of gig workers, it gives employment to them. Dhingra ji, I would like to know you about specifically working conditions of drivers, truck drivers, commercial vehicle drivers. When we were in Karnataka, we were in Bengaluru, we were in the first place of this conclave, so many people have told us that there are many difficult for drivers in the past few years. They took loans, because they couldn't pay for it, because everything was stopped, COVID came, and there was a lot of cost pressure. At that time, many of the transporters, because you are an employee, so you have also helped them, but as much as you can help them, today's rate, if we talk about gig workers, gig workers, drivers, living conditions, how is it better from the first time? And you, because you are transporters, you are representatives of this sector, what are you taking initiatives to make their life better? Look, the first driver and today's driver is very different. पहले हमारे जो ट्रक्स थे ना एसी वाले ट्रक नहीं होते थे। जी। अब गवर्नमेंट ने मैनेट्री कर दिया कि हर ट्रक के अंदर एसी लगेगा। तो उसके अंदर मतलब ड्राइवर्स को एक्सेप्टेंस हो गई है। तो हमारे को ड्राइवर अच्छे से और अच्छे ड्राइवर मिलेंगे और ड्राइवर अच्छे वो चलेंगे और जो आप बता रहे हैं क कि हमने उसका पैसा नहीं रखा लेकिन हमार को सपोर्टेड मिला उसने टाइम दिया तो हम आगे बढ़ गए तो ये चीजें हैं तो ड्राइवर एक ह्यूमन भी नहीं है तो वो समझता है हमारी बातें कि भाई आज के रेट में कंपनी के पास इतना स्लो डाउन है कंपनी को काफी चीजें देनी है इवन गवर्नमेंट ने भी हमार को सपोर्ट उसी उस पे आ गए कि जहाँ पे हम पहले थे तो ड्राइवर्स तो इम्प्रूव हो रहे हैं और जैसे जैसे अब चीज़ें आ रही हैं और ड्राइवर सिलेक्शन हो रही है और ड्राइवर पहले क्या करता था कि आप गाड़ी चलाते थे गाड़ी डीजल ज़्यादा खा गई तो हमारा क्या रीज़न था कि भाई ये तो झूठ बोल रहा है अननेसरी हमारी चीज़ें प्रॉब्लम क्रिएट होती थी तो अब क्या है कि टेक्नोलॉजी से हम ड्राइवर का एक बिहेवियर पता लग जाता है कि ये ड्राइवर जेनवनली सही है या गलत है तो उससे हमारे को ड्राइवर सिलेक्शन करना इजी हो जाता है हम उसको डीजल एक्स्ट्रा दे सकते हैं कि भाई ये तेरा डीजल एक्स्ट्रा पकड़ कोई बात नहीं तू आगे मेहनत कर आगे हम इम्प्रूव करेंगे पहले ये चीज़ों में इंडस्ट्री में नहीं थी हम कहते हैं ड्राइवर चोर है हम ड्राइवर चोर क्यों बोल रहे हैं ड्राइवर अच्छा है अगर जेनवनली अगर अच्छा है तो अच्छे से काम करेंगे हम उसको एक्सपेंस भी पे करेंगे तो ये चीज़ें समझ के ना तो वो ट्रांसपोर्ट के साथ दोबारा से एसोसिएट हो रहे हैं क्योंकि पहले ड्राइवर नहीं आते ड्राइवर कहता है कि मालिक भी डांटता है उधर आर भी डांटता है सब डांट रहे हैं उसको और उधर से पार्टी भी बोलती है कि भाई तू गाड़ी जल्दी लगा कितना प्रेशर से वो चलता है तो अभी चीज़ें धीरे धीरे चेंज हो रही हैं और ड्राइवर की चीज़ें हम अंडरस्टैंड कर रहे हैं कि भैया तेरे को ये गलत है हम इसको और अच्छे से करेंगे काम तो ओनर और ड्राइवर एसोसिएट है आप साथ तभी वो आगे काम करते हैं Fair enough. I think uh, it's a collaboration, it's a partnership, and a partnership that is much needed. Aapko bhi drivers chahiye, drivers ko bhi kaam chahiye. So I think if both of you work together in tandem with one another, it results in a better partnership. Before I let you go, I have to ask, what are your immediate expectations from the government? Uh, I know that there will be an election manifesto soon. I'm sure your representation will also go and speak to various transport departments. Aapki kya maange hain sarkar se? What are you hoping the government will do in coming years for the road transport logistics sector? In terms of immediate requirement would be ease out on the e-wayable compliances because there is a lot of unclarity in how they tackle the e-wayable issues. 
सो so, उसकी वजह से हमको काफ़ी सारी पेनल्टी और हरासमेंट को सफ़र करना पड़ता है ऑन रूट सो दैट इज़ समथिंग विच दे कैन वर्क ऑन ऑन एन इमीडिएट बेसिस अ लॉट ऑफ वर्क इज इज डन बाई द डिफरेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट आर हेडिंग द रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट इंडस्ट्री फ्रॉम आवर एंड बट स्टिल मोर रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑन दिस इशू विल डेफिनेटली सपोर्ट द ऑपरेशन मिस्टर टिंगरा क्या मांगे हैं सरकार से इस वक्त गवर्नमेंट से यही मांगे हैं जो इन्होंने चलान का सिस्टम अभी बनाया हुआ है ये चलान क्लियर करने के बाद भी हमारे को पे करना पड़ता है एक्स्ट्रा उसको किसी तरह और बेटर करा जाए जिससे कि हमारे को जब हम चलान क्लियर कर देते हैं आरटीओ के पास जाते हैं तो अननेसरी हमारे को और पे करना पड़ता है तब जाकर हमारी चलान की क्लियरेंस आती है और जो बड़े ट्रांसपोर्टर हैं उनको एक पोर्टल दिया जाए जिससे कि वो सारे चलान को ईजिली देख सके कि एक जगह पर वो बना कर दे सकते क्योंकि तो हमारे को चलान पर बहुत ज़्यादा एक्सपेंसिव पड़ रहे हैं आज की डेट ओके All right. That is as far as bottlenecks in road transport sector is concerned. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. All right. I think I'll just take a quick 30 seconds break. We'll be right back. Thank you very much. All right may I please now request Mr Rajneesh Kochkave to come back Rajneesh Kochkave from Continental Tires he'll address the audience with a presentation thank you very much thank you shweta uh, i think the discussions that we had were pretty interesting a uh, lot of insights into what we are going through uh, what are the certain improvements areas that we definitely are looking for a uh, lot of things that we discussed uh, did hover around the national logistics policies the different uh, issues that we are facing in the current situation and why this policy has been formulated as i get to understand we spent close to 9 Five to six years before we came on to the first draft. Anyway, so I am here, uh, pretty excited to be talking about different technologies that we bring to, on the table uh, in terms of digital solutions. I'll also talk about, uh, so, uh, uh, let's say, I'll just uh, briefly talk about how transport, why quantity, uh, all the different things. So let us get started. so as we have spoken uh, that uh, you know we started this operation 1871 itne 150 se zyada saal purani company hai and if you look at this uh, there are lot of first that we have done i mean when i joined conti i joined conti about 10 years back i was very pleasantly surprised to know ki jo pattern hota hai tire pe pehle tire pe pattern nahi hota tha jo hum guddi kehte hain both in passenger car tires as well as truck tires we are the company which brought in the patterns for the first time on a tire wheel i mean that's a huge technological advance as we said for the history of mankind i think the most important inventions was wheel but after wheel if you have to talk about something significantly uh, important which impacted the tire life was the pattern i mean now we talk about either fuel efficiency comfort right quality maneuvering tried uh, i mean tracking in trucks we talk about how can we improve on mileage how we can we uh, lower the fuel efficiency all these things mostly would come from a pattern which we developed i think way back secondly we will talk about sustainability a lot but uh, we are the only organization which have come out with uh, a rubber which is made out of dandelion uh, flour and that is currently now in a serial production we are uh, we are using it in bicycle tires uh, we would like to see that come across in uh, in passenger car tires i think truck tires will take a little longer but these are some of the few first that we have said 
moving on this is how we operate if you look at uh, the global footprint we are present in almost 58 uh, 58 countries we have operations and we are still expanding i mean it's not that uh, this is it but we are still expanding <coughs> How transport as a sector or logistics as a segment is playing a role as far as Indian economy is concerned? The contribution to GDP is close to 14 to 15 percent. Now there was another interesting uh, data that came up when I was uh, doing this and it said that the logistics cost in India, for India, is I think almost 14 percent of the GDP which is possibly the highest ever or let's say one of the highest in the world like if you look at the logistics cost in a country like uh, US or advanced countries it's close to eight to nine percent and that has been one of the major driving factors why we are looking at NLP I mean we are talking about hub and spoke model in terms of road transport we are talking about integrating you know railways and I mean just to give you an example if you look at India we have almost 70 to 75 percent of the movement on road through road transport. Railways, ka I think, may 10 to 15 percent, not more than that. If you look at the other countries, or let's say advanced countries, where railways is almost 50 to 60 percent. One of the main reasons, हमारे यहाँ पे railway का कोई goods railway का कोई dedicated track नहीं है. So, वो railways भी उन्हीं पे चलती हैं, जिसपे passenger vehicle, passenger trains चल रही हैं. And when it comes to prioritization, the passenger trains will always get the first prioritization, which means our logistics, yeah, our transportation ka jo time hai, it will always be much higher and that is where you see most of the transportation is done on the transport sector or let's say the road transport, surface transport. And all these things the government has taken cognizance of and they are wanting to address it, not wanting to, they have already addressed it. Let's see how fast can we bring those changes or kitni jaldi unki jo efficiency hai that becomes visible to us. If agar aap dekhe to people transport, 85% of the people transport, road transport se ho raha hai. Railways nahi hai. I always used to feel ki railways pe ek bhoat bada chunk chalta hooga. Matlab 40% se hai railways honge aur 40% idhar hooga. But 85% people movement jo hai wo sadak se ho rahi hai. If I can give you some numbers, almost 37 crore log travel karte hai road se. Kuch 7 crore ke aas paas hai jo railways se hai. Or kuch 1.5 se 2 crore log hai jo flight lete hai. ये ग्राउंड रियलिटी है हम दिल्ली बॉम्बे बैंगलोर में जब एयरपोर्ट्स पे जाते हैं वी फील दैट एवरीबॉडी इज फ्लाइंग इट्स नॉट दैट आई वाज अपॉल्ड टू रीड एट स्टैटिस्टिक्स व्हिच सेड 85 परसेंट ऑफ इंडियन पॉपुलेशन डू नॉट हैव द वे विद ऑल टू ओन अ टू व्हीलर लीव अलोन अ फोर व्हीलर टू व्हीलर खरीद मतलब दे डोंट हैव द वे विद ऑल टू हैव देयर ओन पर्सनल ट्रांसपोर्ट सो दे हैव टू डिपेंड ऑन गवर्नमेंट रन ट्रांसपोर्टेशन अच्छा ये जान के आपको और आश्चर्य होगा जब आप जब हम रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट की बात करते हैं तो 37 करोड़ में से स्टेट ट्रांसपोर्ट्स सिर्फ 7 करोड़ ट्रांसपोर्ट करती हैं 30 करोड़ इज डन बाय प्राइवेट ऑपरेटर्स तो देर इज ए जो हम यहां आज यहां पे बैठे हुए हैं सो देर इज ए ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ यू नो कंट्रीब्यूशन व्हिच इज कमिंग फ्रॉम अस एंड इट्स एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ कैन वी मेक यूज ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजी to bring in better efficiencies and what are the different technologies available मतलब एक तो ये होता है कि willingness होनी चाहिए और जो अभी panel discussion में एक बात हो रही थी कि we expect things to come faster दूसरी चीज में ये कहूँगा as Indians हम बहुत ज़्यादा जल्दी से चीज़े adapt करते हैं if you look at the UPI payments और digital payments दुनिया में सबसे ज़्यादा शायद digital payments हमारे यहाँ पे हो रहा है माय फ्रेंड्स हूँ लिव इन लिव इन यूएस उनको आज भी जब वो पासपोर्ट रेन्यूअल के लिए जाते हैं वीजा एप्लीकेशन के लिए जाते हैं उतनी डिजिटाइजेशन नहीं है जितनी हिंदुस्तान में है यूके में व्हेन अम फ्रेंड ऑफ माइन वेंट टू ओपन अ बैंक अकाउंट देर वाज नथिंग डिजिटल द वे वी हैव इन इंडिया सब कुछ वैसे ही चल रहा है सो वी मस्ट ऑल्सो कंग्रेचुलेट आर सेल्फ्स की गवर्नमेंट तो एक चीज़ दे रही है बट जितनी जल्दी से हम उसको अडॉप्ट करते हैं और उसको इंटरनलाइज करते हैं 
that also is paving a huge i mean that is also paving the road for government also to you know come up with new ideas new technologies new processes new systems infrastructures they are investing and it is a very exciting phase to be very honest about it and particularly road transport jo hum log yahan baithe hain i think this is we are sitting on cusp of history ye nlp ek aisi cheez hai jo sirf digitization integration cooperation how to how to end the working in silos us pe baat kar rahe and people who are sitting here they have the competencies to understand implement and execute them ye jo chote transporters hain unko ye sab samajhna implementation karna adapt karna it will be more challenging for them i would not say they are not they cannot do it but it will be significantly challenging for them as compared to when we look at ourselves so this is the first technology i wanted to talk about we call it a supreme technology जो हमने मार्केट में सर्वे करा अपने जो भी हमारे भी जो पहले वाले टायर थे वी लुक एट इट वी सॉ देर आर टू थिंग्स दैट इज बॉदरिंग अ फ्लीट वन डीमाउंटिंग एंड माउंटिंग वहाँ दिक्कत आती है और दूसरा व्हेन द टायर इज टेकन ऑफ द व्हील्स वहाँ पे एट टाइम्स जो बीड एरिया होता है बिकॉज ऑफ हीट जनरेशन एंड ऑल थोड़ा ब्रिटल हो जाता है और रिट्रेड पर भी उस पर एक असर आता है मीन यू फाइन द रिट्रेडेबिलिटी इज not what you would want to be and that is where bring in we bring in this supreme technology and uh, this is for the bead area and we basically have addressed these two concerns so we have almost 4x ease in terms of mounting demounting and we have three times uh, the higher strength of the bead area even when you i mean take it off from the first life so i'll just run a small video to explain what it is all about in in greater detail can we have the video tires undergo a great deal of wear and tear every day this results in high heat generation at their contact point with vehicle rims leading to tire degradation mounting demounting and retreading of the tires not only strains the bead areas but also makes them brittle and susceptible to breakage And all of this results in a loss of casing value and tire life for you. This is why Continental has specifically developed the Conti Supreme technology for our tires. Our new rim strip compound with superior anti-aging properties enhances tire bead flexibility, strength, and tear resistance. This results in robust and durable tire beads that improve tire retreadability. Additionally, a tire with Conti Supreme technology is four times easier to mount as compared to a tire with a conventional compound. Enhanced bead flexibility from the technology subsequently minimizes damage caused by mounting and dismounting. Conti Supreme technology ensures that our tires withstand heat degradation and are perfect for retreading throughout their lifetime. We are happy to announce that Conti Supreme technology has now been incorporated into all radial tires manufactured at our plant in India. so uh, that was about conti supreme technology now uh, let me also tell you that uh, hindustan mein humko aaye hue abhi uh, we started operation sometime in 2014 so we are still in a learning phase uh, dheere dheere we are uh, moving into different uh, locations we are getting into different applications we are also getting to understand different challenges you would all agree that the road conditions that we have in india are so very different from the road conditions if you look at either a european market or an american market where we are extremely extremely strong there is nothing that we cannot uh, work out in terms of technology wo sab hai hamare paas it's just that we need to bring out the right product right fit and i would say it's a continuous journey hum kabhi bhi ye nahi keh sakte ki theek hai ye perfect product ban gaya because requirements keep changing needs of the customer is changing so this supreme technology is one step forward uh, it has received very good reviews uh, from uh, the market from the fitters from the fleets who have used it uh, now this is another product that i am very excited to talk about now this is something which is a very unique offering in the market 
uh, we call it 360 degree sorry it just okay let's have a look at the video and Always then i'll talk a driver about it. of change and a driver of business but now we've reinvented it welcome to the second age of the wheel an age of data in which managing your fleet becomes easier than ever because with continental digital solutions you are now directly connected to your tires the data we collect and analyze for you constantly inform you about your tire's pressure, warn about potential damages even before they occur, and let you know when it's time for a change and which tire to choose. This way, you can not only reliably plan maintenance, you can also lower your fuel consumption and carbon emissions whilst keeping your drivers safely on the road. But most of all, you get more uptime for your fleet, while your mind has a bit less to worry about. So I think the video was pretty uh, explainable, self-explanatory. I don't need to go deeper into it. But if I can touch few points, so there is one sensor which is there at the uh, in the tires, tire ke under hota hai, digital device hai, and it talks to electronic. I mean, it, it talks to the other two things that we have. One we call it as a yard reader, jo it's it's not mobile. It's uh, fixed at one place. The other is a CCU, which we call uh, control unit, which is in vehicles which do not come back to the base location let's say in one or two or three days we uh, strongly recommend this to be fitted in the vehicles to aap usko dashboard pe laga sakte and they will all send you the uh, signals or let's say alerts in terms of your temperature of the tire in terms of your uh, air pressure of the tire and uh, we strongly believe i mean if you look at uh, the maintenance of the tires this is one of the most critical areas आप टायर प्रेशर कैसे एक तरीके से मॉनिटर कर सकते हैं एंड इफ यू हैव सम कंसर्न्स कि व्हीकल मूव कर रहा है कोई भी इंटरनल उसकी चीज़ें काम नहीं कर रही हैं या लॉक रिम में कुछ प्रॉब्लम आ रही है एंड द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द टायर इफ इट स्टार्ट्स टू राइज दिस डिवाइस गिव्स यू अलर्ट इमिडिएटली दैट द टेम्परेचर इज बियॉन्ड वॉट इट शुड बी एंड यू कैन हैव एज मेनी इंटरफेस एज यू वॉन्ट इट्स नॉट लिमिटेड टू वन और टू एंड दिस इज अ रियल टाइम डेटा मतलब ये आपको रियल टाइम बताता रहता है किस तरीके से दिस इज दिस इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन द ट्यूबलेस टायर्स बिकॉज दिस जो सेंसर है वो टायर के इनसाइड पे लगता है फॉर ट्यूब टाइप वील हैव टू वर्क डिफरेंटली बट दिस सेंसर द डिजिटल सोल्यूशन दैट वी टॉक अबाउट इट इज करेंटली एप्लीकेबल ओनली इन द ट्यूबलेस सेगमेंट अगर हम जो सर्विसेज की बात करें आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ द मार्केट वुड गिव यू द कोर सर्विसेज in terms of what we do as a scrap analysis what we do uh, driver trainings uh, what we try and tell you about the uh, vehicle how can you recommend i mean best tire that we would want to recommend for your fleets understanding where you operate what are your load conditions abhi i believe uh, most of us are operating on normal load wo jo lift axle wala chakkar hota hai usse load mein thoda sa it needs to be understood ki agar hum lift axle utha rahe hain then the weight weight distribution that goes into it whether we are strictly in normal load or we are moved slightly or significantly into mol category wo sari cheeze we need to uh, calculate payload per tire and then we recommend second is uh, something that we call advanced services is services mein we have something called a probe ye yahan pe humne ek stall lagaya hai wherein you can have a look at everything now the probe is a electronic device which ought current i mean it connects automatically to your system and every data that we are looking at either uska uh, tread depth ho ya uska air pressure ho ye automatically electronically transmit hota hai so i cannot fudge the data even if i want to kyunki agar main ek excel pe kuch likh raha hu ya mere paas ek copy pen pe kuch kar raha hu i can fudge the data which suits my tire performance to eliminate that so that the fleets have a complete clarity complete transparency in terms of what we are doing humne ek probe device kiya that's a device each of my fleet carries you cannot do anything with that data that data exactly shows what is happening on the tires 
तो वो एक हम एफ सी टी टूल कहते हैं दैट्स एन इंटीग्रल पार्ट दैट वी वॉन्ट टू गिव यूर सर्विस स्क्रैप एनालिसिस अगेन वी हैव गॉन डिजिटल इन टू इट इट्स नथिंग इज मैनुअल इट ऑटोमेटिकली विल टेल यू कि कितने टायर है कितना प्रीमेच्योर लॉस हुआ है एंड वॉट इज द काइंड ऑफ कॉस्ट दैट वी हैव लॉस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रीमेच्योर प्रीमेच्योर लॉसेज इट ऑल्सो जनरेट्स अ गुड रिपोर्ट आई हैव नॉट पुट इट हेयर बट सम ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव सीन इट द रिपोर्ट टेल्स यू द हेल्थ ऑफ द टायर कहाँ पे कितने दिनों के बाद टायर को चेंज होना है एयर प्रेशर कैसा चल रहा है उसका जो टेम्परेचर है वो कैसा है गाड़ी की और जो गाड़ी की जो रख रखाव जिस तरीके से चल रही है दैट ऑल्सो इज गिवेन एज अ समरी वेन माई गाय और वी वेन वी गोइंग टू द मार्केट एंड ड्यू द फ्रीड सर्विसेज द थर्ड वन इज द डिजिटल सोल्यूशन जिसके बारे में अभी मैं बात कर रहा था दिस इज द मोस्ट एडवांस सिस्टम दैट वी ऑफर but uh, the only limitation is this works only on the tubeless segment what i understand is we do see a higher uh, shift or we do see a shift from the tube types to tubeless segment considering the kind of roads that we have now ek bahut badi dikkat jo pehle mujhe sunne mein aati thi ki sadke nahi hai tubeless nahi chala sakte abhi bhi jo ek dikkat mujhe batai jati hai agar mere tire mein puncture ho gaya if i don't have the infrastructure and that possibly can be limiting factor for people who want to go tubeless but if i don't have a puncture repair facility how do i operate but i am pretty sure this also would uh, be taken care in near future now there is another video which i would like to run it basically thoda aur deep mein jaake 360 batata hai can we chal yeah can we play it managing a commercial fleet can be challenging as a fleet manager you always want to ensure that your tires are properly inflated fuel and mileage costs are controlled and that your trucks are on the road without any issues. Continental's internal studies have found that a fleet of 10 vehicles can save up to 35,000 ringgit annually just by inflating the tires correctly and by making full use of the tires without scrapping them early. We realize the multiple issues that you face as a customer. And that's why we would like to introduce you to Conti 360's comprehensive range of services and solutions to help you ensure your tires are taken care of the Continental way. As part of our core services, our team conducts scrap tire analysis to give you a detailed review of your tire's performance and highlights areas where you can focus on improving tire usage. Moreover, we offer training to your fleet maintenance team and drivers on efficient handling of tire usage and maintenance. effects of driving behavior on fuel and tire costs and fleet audit reports for your scrap tires Our advanced services include the Conti Fleet Check service where our qualified technical customer service team visits your fleet to perform tire inspections on a periodic basis This includes monitoring your tire characteristics such as pressure tread depth and other tire related conditions Post checkup we provide extensive reports on data to reduce fleet costs information for easier maintenance of tires and peace of mind knowing your tire operations are maintained at an excellent standard our digital solutions include the conti connect tire information and management system that helps increase tire mileage and optimize the fuel consumption of your fleet moreover the system monitors your tires on the road and sends alerts in case of punctures or sudden pressure losses And once your vehicle comes back to the yard, the yard reader station collects data from sensors and transmits it to your fleet team for corrective actions. Conti Connect can also be integrated with your onboard GPS, which allows you to monitor fleet tire performance and receive alerts through our web portal. Vehicles on Conti Connect have realized reduced fuel spend of 3%, increase in tire mileage by 20%, and better road safety of the vehicles. Let us take care of your tire management so you can take care of your business. Contact us now to know more. So in this uh, presentation you might have seen somewhere 35000 ringgits. It's basically a uh, Malaysian currency and uh, this is the kind of results that we've got in Malaysia that's why we have put here. As far as India is concerned we are still in uh, I would say trying stage. we i cannot say uh, categorically that this has been established in some of the fleets but yes in couple of months time or maybe 3 to 4 months of time i think we'll be able to establish that what is the kind of savings 
this uh, this unit brings if you install in your fleets or let's say if you can want to test you can test in couple of uh, vehicles three four five six and see if it were if it's worth it and then you can uh, you know expand the scope last but not the least slide yaha pe humne ek uh, offer rakha hua hai uh, and if you have any query on anything that we have discussed so far in terms of what we offer tires technologies different product related solutions or different uh, uh, these uh, 360 degree solution that we have how does a probe look like how the alerts will look like what is your interface so we have uh, we have a uh, we have the team also here plus physically also we have everything here so this is a promotion that we are running it only for the day and we would be more than happy to connect with you and uh, share receive your thoughts so yeah that's all from uh, from our side uh, good journey so far and we would be more excited more uh, at least i would be looking forward to more interactions during the course of the day and uh, make the day uh, worthwhile it which which it is till now thank you so much thank you thank you rajneesh well as rajneesh mentioned uh, there are special offers and discounts for those who are attending the conference today so feel free to identify one of the continental tires representatives get hold of them for all your queries also remember the TV9 network leaders of road transport awards the nominations for the awards have kick started so please go to tv9awards.com that is the url and nominate yourself for the award ceremony which is expected to take place later in november or december nominate yourself for whichever category you deem fit let's quickly take a look at some of the glimpses of the first season of leaders of road transport awards they are steering india to success paving a road map with innovation technology sustainability and safety it's that time of the year again to celebrate the shining stars of india's road transport sector after the roaring success of season 1 of leaders of road transport awards we are back with another glittering edition continental presents tv9 network leaders of road transport awards 2023 जिंदगी की कठिन पहेली कमाते हैं Hello hello all right i think i'm audible it's time to kick start with our uh, final panel which is sustainable road map for road transport sector now i think we all know by now we are at a very critical juncture if you could just pay attention for me i will i'm will not bore you just a matter of couple of minutes uh we know we are at a very critical juncture i think we all know that road transport logistics sector is the backbone of indian economy there are cost inefficiencies there are issues bottlenecks challenges but one of the biggest challenges that the logistics sector also faces is as far as its future as a sustainable sector or industry is concerned now studies after suggest studies suggest as per projections that there the sector will be one of the most polluting as compared to any other sector in the world so there is a challenge there not just within the transport sector not within the industry but also larger challenge as to the sustainability of the sector itself let's discuss that i'm now being joined by sk puri from anthony roadway sir please come on stage can we also have amrit man md man tourist transport services and mr rajneesh coach kave thank you one last time loudly perhaps all right it's this panel and this conversation between you and the lunch so let's kick started mr man i'll begin with you thank you very much for taking time out sir you know 
picking up from where we left off, and that is essentially some of the challenges that many of your colleagues were discussing. I have them noted down, but more specifically, challenges and bottlenecks in interstate movement, cost inefficiency, and the problems that each of you face at the you know, border, which are your primary challenges as per your colleagues. Would you agree with that? Do you concur with it? What are the other challenges that the industry I, is I'll facing? I'll just come to that point. The biggest uh, challenge right now, this is the pollution. What, what, what we are talking about, the pollution. You just spoke. The, our industry will be the biggest polluter, which I don't agree on that. See, uh, before COVID, uh, see, I'm into luxury segment. I have got all luxury vehicles only, and we sell luxury vehicles only. And uh, before COVID level, we, we have got 150 Volvo coaches. We are, I am talking about passenger transport. So we were having 150 Volvo coaches and we were having more than 100 imported vans. I'm not talking about me. I am a president of Indian Tourist Transport Association also. So you can, I'm talking on their behalf and these are vehicles mostly because of uh, uh, Himalayas, because of desert, because of Taj. Uh, Golden Temple, 40 or 45 percent of uh, the international tourists they come to Delhi. So, more and most of the embassies are here. Uh, parliament is here. We were having 150 Volvos or more than 100 uh, imported vans. But during the COVID, during the COVID time, and almost 45 to 50 percent wiped out. We were uh, we had to sell those vehicles. 90 to 95 percent operators of passenger transport, they got affected by this, almost 90-95% were defaulter in their EMIs. Tourism is a thing which is very first affected by anything. It is like terror, natural disaster, elections, or any policy decisions. So, now, after the COVID, in 2020, not a single Volvo being sold. Volvo coach I'm talking about. 2021, not a single Volvo being sold. 2022, only four Volvo coaches were sold. 2023, before G20, just three or four Volvos were sold, or four Volvos sold. I'm talking about to tourism sec sector. And in totality, we were, we were have, uh, how we will serve the guest if you come out suddenly with a ban on Euro 4 vehicles. So we, uh, we were having 150 vehicles and we were left with 70, 80 vehicles. We added 10, 50 more vehicles, 90, 95 vehicles. And suddenly there's a ban on buses, of Euro 4 buses. Now how we are going to serve? So that is the biggest challenge that the, our government, they do, don't take us into consultation or how to serve them. See, there are five, five lakh cars. Euro 4 cars. There are, uh, I just in the, today in the newspaper only, uh, they're uh, still running barred petrol and diesel vehicles, diesel cars, cars on the road, uh, banned by, GN, uh, uh, by uh, National Green Tribunal. There are gensets, gener gener sets they are running. There are broken roads, unpaved roads, because of that uh, dust is there. There's uh, 1,900 farm fires, highest so far, uh, right now at this time and uh, there are more than 600 heavy industrial uh, industries are here and uh, as I told you 5 lakh uh, Euro 4 cars are there, 20 lakh scooters are there, they are Euro 1, Euro 2, Euro 3 but our few hundred buses they are giving more pollution than all these vehicles. So okay, so, so my understanding is you're not very happy with the steps government has taken to ban polluting vehicles because you believe is, there are other industries that equally pollute? No, I, I, it, is, it is not that we are with the government. Okay. I say if you want to ban, you ban everybody. Why are you banning just few hundred vehicles? You ban five lakh cars. You, you ban 20 lakh scooters. You ban industries. Mm -hmm. you, you put the lockdown, okay, we are happy. But why you select us? It is a biased thing. Okay. We are selecting. See, if, see I, I have customers are there. It, it is like there's, a, there's some function in your family and suddenly you're stopped to handle that. Mm -hmm. How to go ahead? Understood. Uh, show of hands, how many of you think that uh, other industries are also equally polluting? There is no denial to that. But how many of you think that the government is going after road transport logistics 
industry and pointing to it as more polluting than other industries. Okay, well, I think maybe pick your hands up a little bit more. Okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, my understanding of this conversation is, do not identify and go after only commercial vehicles. Also go after passenger vehicles and other polluting industries. That is your message to the government. Yeah. See, I feel so that हमारे को फरमान दिया जाता है फरमान ना पुराने जमाने में किंग देते थे वो बंदे को पकड़ो मार दो तो सेम थिंग इज बीइंग डन हमारे को इफ यू बैठकर वो आपस में डिस्कशन करते हैं अब किसको मारना है ठीक है जी ये ये बस वाले हैं इनको मार दो आज तो दिस इज व्हाट इज बीइंग डन नोबडी कंसल्ट्स अस सी वी दे नीड टू कंसल्ट अस द इंपैक्टेड पीपल बिकॉज़ दे डोंट नो द सिचुएशन दे दे आर नॉट अवेयर अबाउट दिस डाटा कि हाउ यू गोइंग टू सर्व कोई गाड़ी नहीं खरीदी जो सिक्स गाड़ियाँ नहीं है इंडिया दिल्ली के अंदर तो हाउ यू गोइंग सर्व दो थाउजेंड ऑफ टूरिस्ट दोज आर कमिंग एवरी डे टू इंडिया ओके लेट मी टेक दैट क्वेश्चन टू मिस्टर पुरी एज वेल मिस्टर पुरी डू यू अग्री विद दैट फरमान दिया जाता है एज अपोज टू बींग कंसल्टेड एज अ स्टेक होल्डर एंड वॉट सॉर्ट ऑफ कंसल्टेशन वुड यू नीड बिकॉज द गवर्नमेंट इज सेंग वी आर टेकिंग ऑल स्टेप्स वॉट इज पोल्यूटिंग इज पोल्यूटिंग वी वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग दैट ऑफ रोड दैट इज द मैसेज दैट इज द इंटेंशन हाउ कैन गवर्नमेंट डू बेटर टू रियलाइज दैट इंटेंशन there are two things to it a probably the commercial vehicles whether it's truck or bus is more visible and that's how it gets pointed out on the road but if you look at just to supplement what man saab said if you look at the number of passengers carried by a bus vice versa a car and uh, you took at the pollution per person it may be hardly 10% of what a car does because a bus is carrying about 35 passengers if i am correct and a car like me i am driving a single person so in case of 35 in place of one bus 35 bus cars are being plied so i'm i'm, I'm not saying that uh, uh, polluting vehicles can be allowed to carry on but it has to be seen as a complete canvas not on a single color that's what uh, as a industry we feel further going ahead the technology electrical buses which is being spoken about everywhere yes it's welcome as happens with every new technology there is a resistance initially but those resistance are based on the earlier experiences and concerns the transporters have like infrastructure like the cost of battery which will be there as a recurring cost after 3 years which is uh, yet to be known people have been purchasing electrical buses and other cars and uh, there is a big uh, question mark over the cost which they have to reoccur after a given time to add to it there are issues beyond control like water logging and all how the diesel buses or cng buses have been wading through how the electrical bus will behave is yet to be seen these are my takes on this all right uh, in, in interesting very interesting so on one hand we are talking about electrification of fleet on the other hand the industry says we are flagelling we are not able to even meet the bs norms and this is going to be a further whip on us not keeping in account passenger vehicle sales passenger vehicle compliances with industry norms there is a lot of buzz and a lot of conversation around electric vehicles firstly how many of you have traveled in an electric bus ever electric bus 1 2 3 4 people i'm assuming in a group of 25 people i i think rajneesh that gives it away we don't have electric buses just as yet not enough government wants to have more electric buses we know that the initial capital expenditure of electric buses is going to be humongous not many can afford to change their fleet to upgrade their fleet in your understanding how is private sector working with the government to realize the electrification dream hmm interesting question see private players uh, you can't expect them uh, to build the infrastructure right and for electrification i think the most important thing that everybody talks about i would say 
two or three points that's extremely important. First is the infrastructure. Uh, second will be the, uh, as you mentioned, prohibitive cost as compared to an ICE vehicle. And third, uh, which I have heard when I interacted with few of uh, uh, the transporters, what do you do with your lithium cells? Let's say if there is an insurance, you have to take insurance to pay it off. So I was in uh, a Mercedes-Benz uh, dealership at Bangalore, and they were like, sir, we don't know, because the EPR thing has come into place, and nobody has any idea how to dispose of these lithium cells. The customer is after my life. Insurance says you have to show me the EPR certificate. So we have given them uh, an alternate vehicle. Uh, I'm sure that this thing has not come with buses, but let's say you have a bus wherein, for God forbid, if your lithium cells are getting damaged because of an accident which is covered by insurance, the insurance people will ask you for an EPR certificate. So there is a lot that the government needs to do and private place, obviously they will look at, uh, uh, I mean they would definitely look at reducing the polluting uh, environment, but they would also look at their pockets. And how do we make that, I mean uh, the, the chief guest was here. He made a valid point that the, mo the moment we start manufacturing the lithium cells here, if the cost comes down by even 50%, and even if I'm asked to pay, let's say 20%, 30%, 40% more, 20 to 30% more than the ICE vehicle, I am willing to take up, take the cudgels on behalf of non-polluting this thing and saving the mother earth. But the moment I told that, you know, the cost is two and a half times or twice, there we see a resistance. I know people, when they buy passenger vehicles, they do an exact calculation. My Honda City gives me an average of 10. If I buy it, then I have to travel these many kilometers before I start getting the benefits from pure economic sense. I mean, what I they think do? it all boils, boils down to kitna deti hai ha, for the, everybody. How, what is my ROI? And uh, it is also important when you look at uh, the electric vehicle, we still, 99% of the people who have bought electric vehicles, that is their second or the third vehicle. We still cannot risk drive, taking my electrical vehicle and going to Chandigarh. My brother did that, he went to Pune from Bombay, he was stranded, BMW 5 series. <laughs> and he was stranded there for a couple of hours and I was like, why did you do it? Buy a BMW that too electric and be stranded on the road. Yeah, he said, uh, I mean, so the moment you bring more credibility, more trust that, you know, I can take this vehicle to Chandigarh and come back, that is where, see, the moment you see people buying electrical vehicle and that is their only vehicle, you'll find a significant uh, transition into the electrification of the entire this thing. Otherwise... Okay. Rajnish, you know, uh, as someone who tracks, as a business journalist, someone who tracks policies, I know of the policies government has in fact rolled out, initiated, including the FAME scheme to make it easier on pockets of people to give consen consensions or cons you know, some sort of uh, leeway rebates. to buyers and rebates to buyers to make it less expensive for an average person to own an electric vehicle passenger car. It has also rolled out now various PLI schemes for the auto companies, including a PLI for the advanced chemistry cell, which our guest, you know, also hinted at, and that will result in maybe lowering cost of EVs in India in three to four years. So a roadmap, would you agree, has been set in motion? Yeah, I would agree. But I think one thing which government should look into is the uh, alternate fuels. F I mean, if I look at the current scenario, for me, the ethanol blended uh, petrol, those vehicles, they don't uh, get any benefits. I mean, you're, you're not getting any concession, but they bring down pollution significantly. So have this roadmap. Additionally, if you can also incentivize on those alternate fuel vehicles that we have, that will definitely drive the you know anti-polluting uh, or bring down uh, the pollution level that we see in the country. Okay, fair enough. You know, I want to come to you, Mr. Man. You have told me in details what are the challenges that are in the 
कुछ चैलेंजेस आपने बताए कि ऐसा लगता है कि फरमान दिया जाता है और केवल बस ट्रक्स ओनर्स को रोडवेज ऑपरेटर्स को दिया जाता है पैसेंजर कार्स अगर कंप्लाई नहीं भी करती हैं फिर भी सड़कों पे चल रही हैं डीजल जनरेटर्स फिर भी हैं कंस्ट्रक्शन डस्ट फिर भी है तो जो अदर पोल्यूटिंग इंडस्ट्रीज़ हैं उनके पे उन पर उतने एक्शंस नहीं लिए जाते सरकार कह रही है कि हम कर रहे हैं वी आर गेटिंग देर इवेंचुअली बट कहीं से तो शुरुआत होगी मे बी यहाँ से शुरुआत हो रही है तो आप क्या कंसेशंस चाहेंगे इफ़ यू आर टू टॉक टू द गवर्नमेंट इफ यू नो वी वी आर एबल टू फॉरवर्ड योर रिप्रजेंटेशन टू द गवर्नमेंट वट सॉर्ट ऑफ कंसेशन लीवेज आर यू लुकिंग एट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इफ दस टू स्टॉप रनिंग दी जीरो फोर व्हीकल्स so we would like to them take them to uh, we would like that you please take them back whatever the book values they pay to us we'll buy the new vehicles so this is the first thing so because we have invested heavily on these vehicles and as per the motor vehicle act motor vehicle vehicle act says the vehicle life is for 10 years so we must be we must be allowed to run these vehicle for 10 years or if 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 the government has problems we don't have any problem if the government has problem because they should have foreseen this this pollution is not the one thing their pollution has uh, since 2001 the, when the supreme court uh, had come into the action so it is last 22 2 years it has been running so they should have foreseen it and they should have stopped registering this vehicle at that time only if we have got regist- uh, these vehicle registered and the government wants us to stop the first thing is that they should come out with some kind of subsidy scheme new vehicles they take those vehicles back give us new vehicles and give as much capacity as we had before covid we were talking about farman interesting okay uh, we were talking about farman so uh, the farman was issued like speed governors ki aapke paas gaadi mein speed governor hone chahiye to now abhi uh, friends abhi sare keh rahe the ki mr nitin gadkari nitin gadkari has done a great job sab jagah बड़े अच्छे एक्सप्रेस वे हाईवेज बना दिए हैं हम दो घंटे में देहरादून पहुंच जाएंगे बारह घंटे में हम बॉम्बे पहुंच जाएंगे बट हाउ हमारी तो स्पीड गवर्नर जो हमारी जो मर्सिडीज़ कार है और में 80 किलोमीटर की स्पीड की लिमिट है अगर आप नॉर्मल गाड़ी है वो 120 130 150 भी चल सकती है मगर मेरी अगर मर्सिडी दो करोड़ की भी गाड़ी है तो इट कैन नॉट रन मोर देन एट्टी किलोमीटर मेरे को तो वही दो दिन लगेंगे जाने में बेशक एक्सप्रेस वे बना है नहीं बना सो दैट इज़ अ थिंग अनदर थिंग इज़ दैट and to get exemptions is for man's exemption ke liye again we have to go to the court ki meri gaadi ko exemption kiya jaye because it is a mercedes car or it, uh, speed governor cannot fit into that another thing is panic buttons abhi kya hai ki you must have seen in the newspaper also panic button uh, ka is a good scam is going on so what Kaam is panic nahi karte huh? half the times they don't even work half the time i i'll back to defer here hello if they do work do uh, they please work sir, please sir let me say fast so we went for the rti uh, so what are the record you have got panic button they say we don't have any record for this panic button whatever what there is not a single report for this panic button is there so so we have to pay 15000 to 20000 rupees for every panic button whereas there is no system what is the meaning of panic button we panic button the via immediately helicopter aayega ambulance aayegi and aapko pakadegi aur leke jayegi this is this is what panic button means no so they are panic button but there is no system it is who is who so is benefiting out of this system we don't know again we have to go to the court to get out of this roman then in 2015 these but these sir you know i'm sorry i completely in support of the industry but every change is difficult right changes are never easy and as humans as industries as workers as people we have always resisted change i sh- i understand it's a difficult change it has an economic cost but are all these changes bad See, you I have mean, to be practical. The intention here no, is good. No, you, you have to be practical. It, the panic button. If they're charging fifteen, twenty thousand rupees, if there no system is in the background, so is this is, is this fair? We should pay for no services. आपके घर में वाईफाई का पैसे चार्ज करें और आपको वाईफाई ना दें और you still keep on paying wifi for years. Is that fair? You give your answer. Got it. So, आप कह रहे हैं कि अगर we are paying for the service, yes, then the service yes. should be made available. That should us. be a, that should be made okay. available. Okay. Mr. Puri, how much you you said you disagree. What do you disagree with? See, uh, panic buttons. I'll not uh, talk about others. We have been because we are basically into city transport through cluster buses in Delhi, and uh, whatever buses have been inducted by the different concessionaires in Delhi uh, in last four years. 
are fitted, factory fitted with the panic buttons. And all of them, maybe there may be exemption of say around one or two buses are working and are being checked on daily basis by us as well as by the DIMS uh, executives. Those are working. Only some are working. No, I'm <laughs> saying almost all are working. There all may be working. one or two buses which may be found faulty at any given point of time and that they are also immediately corrected in the night. Mm -hmm. so that's a clear thing. Now, as far as uh, Mr. Rajesh was mentioning about the uh, infrastructure for charging and all, uh, almost about nine months back while traveling to Haridwar, I saw a charging station even at, uh, uh, after Meerut, at one of the rest fields. So things are coming up, definitely try. If you go back in Delhi, when the CNG was introduced, as you rightly mentioned, that certain things, when the change comes, we don't like it. But ultimately, somewhere it has to start. There was a, I'll use the same word what Mansa was using, for man, that CNG buses will be used from a cutoff date. And for about a week or so, there were all press uh, releases and uh, photos everywhere that the passenger was stranded, there were no buses on the road, when the diesel buses were withdrawn suddenly. But you see the way CNG setup has come up. Today, it's almost convenient for everybody. So things will work on. But yes. No, I, was, I was responding to the query when she asked, uh, private players, how, what they can contribute. So I said, infrastructure may private player See, contribute. Nahi kar if you look at Delhi, probably we all are not noticing the electrical three-wheelers and all. They are being charged at lot many places under even uh, flyovers. No, no. If you if you look at from a direction perspective and the uh, I would say the uh, advances that we have made in last, it is visible. It is. I mean, it is visible. And Matlab electrical buses per se will be coming only for cities. Basically, it is just to control the pollution in city. Right. It cannot okay. be for interstate. I have to say one thing. Yes, Mr. Man. Yeah. See, now we were talking about firmans. Now, how to reverse those firmans? So, how do you reverse the firman? It's okay, it's a mistake. You have to say that it's a speed corner, a panic button, or in the last eight years, there was no bus register in Delhi. There was no BF6 vehicle register. And now, the Euro 4 buses, we have to serve our clients. So, now, how to, to whom to approach? That is the biggest challenge to us. हम किसके पास जाएं कहाँ पर दुखड़ा रोएं कैसे जाएं and every time we have to go to the courts and it is a you you know that if you go to the Supreme Court you go to the high the high expenses are there and we are already overburdened by this COVID thing but still uh, so I, I, because I am president of uh, it uh, Indian Tourist Transport Association already we have been fighting for five cases yes courts they are giving reliefs if the courts they understand if the courts they understand why okay why the senior officials they don't understand okay so understood, understood, Mr. Man. You know, I, I just have a couple of minutes. So, Rajneesh, I think I'm going to come to all of you for the closing remarks. But to begin with you, Rajneesh, you heard of the bottlenecks. You heard of the challenges, the cost challenge, the efficiency challenge, the implementation challenge. Uh, pe e easily accessible hai, to infra nahi hai. Infra hai, to uh, car, buses, bahut mehengi hai. So, one way or the other, we have to mitigate all those challenges. Uh, what can the government do? at this point to move towards a more sustainable transport logistics sector while also keep transporters happy because from what I'm hearing Mr. Man and Mr. Puri are saying hum stakeholders se, hum, humare se ya humare saath consultation karna bohat zaruri hai. See what I will say is you cannot have a picture perfect world. What we need to also understand is the intent of the government or let's say the policy that they're bringing in. Or if I look at the intent, implementation, they are trying to be as fair and transparent as possible. But we, we can have situations which may not work the way we would want them to work for us. But we'll have to take that in stride. And uh, whatever we said about sustainability and all, we've been discussing so much about national logistics policy, but I keep coming back to that. You look at that policy, it's one of the most articulate, intelligent, comprehensive. brilliant, comprehensive policy that you would ever see. Matlab, mere ko ab jo dar lagta hai na, the challenge is not what they have made. The challenge is how do they implement it? Kyunki, when you look at a hub spoke model, I mean the transporters for people like 
they also have to rise to the occasion in terms of bringing the digitization, adopting those technologies. Ho sakta hai, some share might be taken away by, let's say, railway transport, if what they're thinking, if that comes, it comes into the picture. So I would say, if you look at from an EV also, PLI ko leke, the way this government is so hard pressed, Tesla ko bhaga diya. I mean, I should not be taking names, but uh, one, of the leading, one of the leading, uh, I would say, EV, EV player mm -hmm. was very politely asked to not bring in their uh, manufacture products from any other country, but please set up a manufacturing unit. Apple has set up the manufacture. So through PLI, they are driving a lot of things which otherwise would have been very difficult. We import and import and sales mates. It, so I am of the firm believer that uh, this government is on transportation and this NLP, we are doing a lot of things right. In terms of sustainability, we are not only making noises, we are seeing, I mean, I Delhi in Delhi, 10 years back, I stayed at a place where there were only three wheelers. And they used to create chaos. Now battery wale chalte, we don't even realize no pollution, nothing. And it's been completely replaced. I don't see a polluting. Right. So we are on the right track. Uh, and as you rightly said, we will have pains of transition. Absolutely. It's as simple as that. Pains of transitions, very we'll evident. Have to, we'll have to look into it. But, but one, one minute, we are on the right track. One minute each to you, Mr. Man, and to you, Mr. Puri. I understand the challenges. Pains of transitions are also being felt. The pangs are being felt by the industry. One good thing, because we are ending, and I want to end on a positive, optimistic note. One good thing that you have seen uh, in government's quest to sustainable transportation, sustainable mobility in the last five years. Uh, Frank Singh, I am very critical to these things. So uh, my friend, what he says, uh, he's really appreciating all the things. But uh, electricity, from where we get? We get from the coal only. Okay. Still, still we don't have uh, until unless we start from renewable energy, from uh, hydro, we increase our uh, uh, capacity in hydro or uh, some other sources, solar or nuclear sources. If we if we have more electric vehicle, we have more, we'll use more coal. So it is equally polluting. Okay. So it is not that uh, that uh, we are going great guns. See, I give, I tell you one incident. That they have said that in Meerut, they had a charging station. But charging station tha, but was the charging station uh, given by the government or was that a private? It was a private. It was inside a motel. So, so, so this basically to keep a facility for those who are traveling from Delhi to Haridwar or Rishikesh. So, well, sir, until unless the government comes out with this kind of solution mm -hmm. and they put charging station at the, all, all the highways, at the important places, we, we cannot go ahead. Okay. So, Understood, sir. Mr. Puri. I am of the view that uh, ultimately the demand will drive the complete thing, whether it's a charging station or other infrastructure. It okay. is question of egg and hen, which came first. So if the vehicles are there, as we have seen in the transition from diesel to CNG, initially there used to be long queues for, if uh, you remember, there were uh, auto drivers standing through the night at the CNG pump. Today, on an average, it doesn't take more than 20 minutes. So things will definitely, we are optimist, things will improve. And uh, as far as uh, policies are there, they are with the government is committed and we will definitely get something better. Absolutely. One there thing which I want to mention, which you mm -hmm. were uh, discussing earlier in the day about the driver's condition and the poor uh, salaries, I will put it in a simple words. I beg to differ on that. Probably all the uh, big transport who are sitting here, leading transporters, will agree today <coughs> with most of the organized sector, the driver draws minimum 25 to 28,000 rupees per month. Okay. It is not what is being given in the press. They might be in a, some unorganized sector or in the remote areas. It's not so in Delhi and other metros, if I'm correct. No, no, I, I, Gentlemen, I will we'll take bigger. this conversation. We'll take this conversation yeah. off stage. But thank you very much, Mr. Puri, Mr. Man, Mr. Kochkave, for joining us here this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm told I'm supposed to do what of thanks. Uh, Mr. Anand is also here. Absolutely, sir.
please take five. So this uh, discussion was really very interesting and मुझे कहानी याद आई तो मैंने सोचा कि वो कहानी आप लोग को सुना दूँ दो मिनट का वक्त लूँगा ज़्यादा नहीं तो मैं जयपुर से दिल्ली आ रहा था और आ, किसी अच्छे वाहन में हम थे जिसका एवरेज बहुत कम था उसमें हम लोग कुछ बारह चौदह लोग बैठे हुए थे और आ, अजमेरी गेट के पास वहाँ पे एक रिक्शे वाले ने कुछ पकौड़ी वगैरह खाई होगी और उसने एक दोना वहाँ पे फेंका तो उस गाड़ी में जो चौदह अठारह सीटर गाड़ी थी उसमें ये चर्चा शुरू हुई कि ये लोग ऐसे ही गंदगी फैलाते हैं जयपुर इतना साफ़ है लेकिन देखो ये दोना खा करके इसने फेंक दिया तो ये गंदगी फैला रहे हैं ऐसे पॉल्यूशन हो रहा है ये बात निकल के आई और मैं रास्ते भर ये सोचता रहा कि ये आदमी महीने भर में जितने पानी से नहाता है हम सबके घर में उतना पानी रोज़ डेली बेसिस पे फ्लश कर दिया जाता है हम जिस तरह के गाड़ी में चल रहे हैं उसमें एसी भी चल रहा है और भी चीज़ें हैं तो हमारा ये जो परसेप्शन ये कहानी सुनाने के पीछे की वजह जो है ना और वो रोड ट्रांसपोर्टर्स के लिए मुझे इसलिए महत्वपूर्ण लगती है क्योंकि रोड ट्रांसपोर्टर्स की बात होते के साथ में एक माइंड ओवर द ईयर्स ओवर द डिकेट्स बना हुआ है कि इनके बारे में हम सोच लेंगे उनका से बहुत नहीं रहा है सरकार के पास पास में पब्लिक उसमें दिल्ली का हैदराबाद का चेन्नई का 20 परसेंट से कम क्राउड 90 परसेंट रोड ऑक्यूपाई करके रोज चलता है और मेजॉरिटी टू थर्ड ट्रैफिक जो है वो 13 परसेंट पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट में चलता है तो पॉल्यूशन कौन कर रहा है ये देखना पड़ेगा पॉल्यूशन हैज़ अ क्लास और रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट की जब बात आती है तो उसको हम डी क्लास मान लेते हैं उसको हम ऑफ क्लास मान लेते हैं उसको हम नीचे का क्लास मान लेते हैं तो ये परसेप्शन जो है बना हुआ है एक दिन में ख़त्म नहीं होना है इसके तीन स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं एक तो जो ये सेक्टर आप लोग जो आज यहाँ पर मौजूद हैं दूसरा सरकार जिसको कि इन लोगों को कंसिडरेशन में लेना चाहिए क्योंकि जितने ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन की कोशिशें नीतियाँ सरकार बना रही है वो सब हल्की कमज़ोर पड़ेंगी अगर आप लोग उसमें इन्वॉल्व नहीं होंगे कंसल्टेसन uh, में ट्रांसपेरेंसी कम्स विद द स्कोप ऑफ इंक्लूसिवनेस अदरवाइज उस ट्रांसपेरेंसी का कोई मतलब नहीं है तो सरकार ट्रांसपेरेंट है लेकिन सरकार को ट्रांसपेरेंसी के साथ साथ इंक्लूसिव भी होना पड़ेगा और तीसरी चीज़ जो है वो मास मीडिया की है जो टी वी नाइन उस जिम्मेदारी को समझता है और बाकी भी ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस उसको समझें हम भी उस क्रम में आगे जाएं कि इन दोनों के बीच का कनेक्ट और सोसाइटी में उस परसेप्शन को बदलने की जो जिम्मेदारी है वो मास मीडिया की है एंड आई थिंक दैट वी आर कमिटेड टू टेक दैट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फॉरवर्ड थैंक यू आई थिंक द टेक अवे फॉर मीज पोल्यूशन हैज क्लास सो बिफोर यू बिल्ड परसेप्शन नो योर प्रिवलेज एंड नो योर क्लास Well, with that, we have come to the end of this. Uh, I know, uh, sir, has already summed up the discussion we had over the course of last two hours. It's a pleasure here to be on behalf of TV Nine Network to have representation from the Road Transport Department from all across Delhi. This is the second conclave. The first conclave happened in Bengaluru. We had huge, uh, you know, interest as well as. discussions that were invigorating we continue to have those discussions here in delhi and we will have them further in jaipur and mumbai you are the backbone of the economy you are the backbone of the logistics and transport sectors nothing is possible without you and we hope that you continue to strive to be sustainable and we will endeavor to take your problems your challenges to the government thank you very much for taking time out here i shweta kothari take great privilege in thanking you all thank you <laughs>